it's my first time using zoom it's very um i can't believe this is your first time using zoom bro well yeah i will i'm not in college i don't have anyone to really report to in corporate so there was like no reason to do it i guess well you ready <laughs> yeah all right Now listening to the Chewing Ground Hey guys, welcome Ooh. to episode 41. Oh my god, 41 weeks. That's insane. We're almost uh, ending the year. Um, also, I know what you guys are thinking. There's a guy on the screen right now that looks like my sibling or a long lost brother. And um, although you might not know this about me, I am a tiny bit Chinese inside me. So maybe we are of Genghis Khan descent uh, together. And so I have a fellow brother, brotherin, and also the biggest, uh, the biggest fish I've ever caught. I'll, I'll say in terms of following, um, oh. two hundred and eighty thousand subscribers on you flatter uh, me, <laughs> YouTuber B Mo Monus or Minus, mm. really. Yeah, it doesn't Which, matter. I, I gotta talk to you about that name, by the way. And his name is Nathan. Ugh. I just like coughed while I yes. said that. Nathan Nye. Yeah, so those Asian names, they're, they're, they're hard to get across. Oh, thank you. What'd you thank say? You, What'd you, you say? Thank What'd you, you say? Those Asian names. You know, they're tricky. They're tricky for English speakers. <laughs> yeah, I was like, Nathan, I about choked up. Oh, dude, all right, so first off, let's talk about this uh, name you got, man. So B-, minus. Had, did, did you ever get your ass beat by your parents for getting a B-? minus? Is that why you did it? Um, okay, so like the, the etymology of the name, if that's even the correct terminology, is like uh I, i'm like not a very good gamer and i started off as like uh like a fifa player and i was like i'm not i saw I'm, that i'm kind of dog yeah i'm kind of dog shit at the game but i'm not awful so i was like oh i'm about like a b minus average uh... which when you trans when you wait it for asian i was actually an a minus student which essentially is a b minus in in most asian households so an f I'm just yeah just like... pretty much as you don't get an a uh growing up asian like you're just like the black sheep of the family so uh first off i want to say you're for everyone who's listening his links are in the description box down below but also um the name of the channel is b m o n u s but i, I so off of that did you ever disappoint your parents with bad grades uh definitely i was not one of the the super asians you know what i'm talking about of like <laughs> not me bro yeah it's just like your your weighted gpa is 4.3 like my my weighted was like 3.9 i did like the ap you're class and that man. kind of stuff yeah you're and, you're, and yeah you're in the middle you're just cruising dude i'm like good for an american but i'm like bottom tier for like a typical asian student we yeah which work. is like yeah it was just like the worst because it's just like no college is going to accept an A minus Asian. You know, it was like we have so many 4.4 .4 valedictorians, like does a bunch of bullshit extracurricular activities that like they were never going to accept like that bullshit. So it, it, I was I was the shame of the family for a while. Let's let's just put it at that. Dude, I get that. I'm um, I wouldn't say my, my family never would say like I'm the shame of the family, but my sister was like. I have one sibling and she's like the golden child. She's the reason we made it mm. out of poverty. Like all this shit, right? Like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, I know, bro. But then somehow my parents just like, they, I guess it's because I'm a boy. They just like spoiled me more still. And it's like so um, fucked. <laughs> I went, I was, you're, gonna, uh, you're, you're Vietnamese and, and yes. Chinese. Uh, so I'm fully, technically, I'm fully Vietnamese. But my, mm -hmm. um, my mom's side, she said that my grandfather was Chinese. So like a little bit. I mean, really, like, we're all... You guys took us over, from, bro. Yeah. Yeah, you guys I, fucked us. <laughs> yeah, but then, like, the... like, But nobody really, st you know, nobody yeah, really yeah. fucks with the Vietnamese. Y'all kicked out everybody. Yeah, like, that's true. Americans, you, bro. Like, the only L. Yeah, like, you, you won against the Americans, and, like, you invited the Americans to be tourists before you invited the Chinese back. So that, like, <laughs> says a lot about Dude, your were... guys' like history you're like yeah we won you it, guys want to come back and watch a ping pong show like yeah let's it also let's, wait no that's thailand you know it also explains how fucking disgusting we are because we definitely won because of guerrilla warfare which is just like putting shit everywhere i mean <laughs> well, isn't that bits. like i mean isn't that like the whole like we mythologize in america like our guerrilla fighters are in, yeah, 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 yeah yeah against the british so it's just like yeah it's become a history podcast by yeah. the way <laughs> yeah. as as we're kicking this off i'm gonna go ahead and open up a matcha. 
Speaking of history, Cheers, I mean, brother. like we should, yeah, both of us should hate the Japanese, but Yo, goddamn, the they make bro, good products. I'm like, I'm like, I have, I have, you know, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't have that many, many Japanese fans. I mean, uh, friends. I have like two compared to like there, other Asians. Well, how many Japanese are in like North Carolina? I don't know. I just remember this one kid I grew up with. Um, I don't, I'm not really like friends with him like that now, but his, he was a, he was a fuck up in uh, school. And his mm -hmm. mom, so he's half Jap, half uh, half American, and his mom mm -hmm. would come up to me and be like, "Thank you so much for being his friend. I know he's a lot to handle." Oh uh, damn! <laughs> please, please, because she she saw that like I'm a good kid. Like I was a good kid. I mean, I, I mm -hmm. used to do some fuck shit, but like I was a generally good kid. So she was like, "So please take care of him and shit." I'm like, "Oh my god, what's gonna go happen?" I played soccer with him, but um. Damn, dude. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're you're second gen, right? Because your parents were born here. No, my parents were born in Hong Kong. Oh uh, shit! But they so came here young. Your yeah, first yeah, gen. Yeah. Okay, hell yeah. Uh, so they came here when they were like 13, 14. They ever beat your ass? Uh, yeah. I okay, mean, okay. like we're cool, Asian. Cool, cool. Like I don't like uh, all this discourse about like don't hit your kids. I'm like, no, no. hit your kids when beat they deserve the it. Them. Like, don't beat them when you're drunk. But like, <laughs> I did some shit that deserved to get my ass kicked, Bro. and like. I learned from it, and all I didn't shoot up at school. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, all successful Asians. Look at you. If I if if I had a promise, if like the devil or whatever, I, I don't actually believe in anything, but like someone came down and was like, "Hey, I can guarantee your son's gonna have two hundred eighty thousand subscribers on YouTube, but you gotta beat the shit out of him." I'm like, "All right, let's do it. Let's happen." <laughs> I'm pretty sure they would have beat the shit out of me even without the devil. Like <laughs> they don't, that's it. Like Asians don't have religion. They yeah. beat their kids out of just like pure, yeah. just like, uh, like just to like put fear of God in you without having God, you yeah, know, dude. Uh, what's, what was a, a common punishment in, uh, in a Chinese household? By the way, guys, we're going to talk about his YouTube channel in a little bit. <laughs> um, who cares? Yeah. Uh, like, I got I got the, the the feather duster treatment. Do you ever oh, did you ever yeah, have that like the, thing? Um, it's like colorful or no, not colorful. Yeah, it's like yeah, colorful yeah, yeah. and it's like really kind of like it's basically like a switch mm -hmm. from people from North Carolina. You know what a switch is, but oh, it's yeah. like a long, really straight, uh, like flexible bamboo stick. Oh yeah, and then one end of it is feathers, so that you use it you as like literally it, yep. a feather duster, and the other side is just a long, flexible wooden rod <laughs> that like anytime like I fuck shit up. Or like I got bad grades in school. They were like, put out your hand, the top of your hand. Oh wow! And they would they would wrap the shit yeah, out of it. Yeah. So uh, we had the dusters. We had the plastic ones. So the issue with that is same same concept, just plastic black. The only issue with that is sometimes it would hit so hard it would snap because it's plastic yeah. and it's hollow. But you know, um, I always I always find it fascinating talking to different Asians, uh, categories and stuff like, uh, or types of Asian and find out what type of punishment they are. Cause I feel like, you know what I think is the worst one Korean or Japanese people, bro. What did the Koreans and the Japanese do to their kids? Bro. All right. So I don't, I don't actually know, but I, I have this, I had this friend, uh, growing up in middle school and high school. She was such a sweet girl. She was like the quiet kid. Like, um, you watch, you watch anime, you know, Hinata from, uh, uh, yeah. yeah yeah literally yeah yeah, yeah 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 like that type of girl but she was like an excellent student right she told mm -hmm. she told it rachel i'll put her name on it uh she told me one day she was like oh yeah my uh my parents got really mad one time when i got a b or no an a minus or something like that so um what they did to her it was middle school so you got to think like 11 12 13 they uh, they, when she sh saw the report card and everything, they yelled at her, of course, and then they made her, um, at, when, while, she, while she was showering, uh, I think her mom came in and grabbed her and took her outside during the winter of North, in North Carolina and made her, uh, like, kind of, like, bow outside for, like, an, a half an hour, hour. I'm like, what the fuck naked, bro? As a kid. That's so fucked Damn. up. <laughs> that's so that's some dishonorable shit, bro. <laughs> yeah, where did that come from? Dude, Dude that's like premeditated. That's yeah, not something dumb. like, oh, I'm gonna take my daughter out right now. No, it's just like, all right, I'm gonna wait till she's like bro, all soaked wet. <laughs> yeah, and that's... then attempt to give my child hypothermia. <laughs> and if she lives, she will become the strongest student. Like it's very anime. If you really think about it, like yeah, isn't this Demon it is Slayer? Anime. It's pretty much Demon Slayer, <laughs> is, is what she did. And did she and become a good student though? She because like is phenomenal i know she was like top 10 in our school and she went off to go to chapel hill i think uh with a full ride and all that shit so who knows i was not that kid 
Yeah, this is what this is what like white people like don't get about Asians is that we're not actually smarter than you. It's no. that our parents beat us if we don't get an A. You're right. So it's just like it's a cultural thing. It's not like a like a genetic. We're just like smarter than everybody. Oh man, but you know what? We're we're the B not B minus crew, man. We're we're in the middle. We're in the middle. Yeah, we're the black. Yeah, we're the we're the. We're well, the underachiever for Asians, yep. and we're above average for most and, Americans. And I feel it like. makes so. sense because of the type of personality we came out to be. I feel like you're very, um, I mean, you're built for YouTube. You're built for this type of content and stuff. And I, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm built for it, but I love doing it. So, like, I feel like maybe all the mid-tier Asians, let's just go all on YouTube, dude. <laughs> Make a crew. I feel like, I mean, like, Asians are kind of doing well on yeah, YouTube. Like, they we, are, we've dude. had some, like, Timothy De La Ghetto. Like, in oh. the early days of YouTube, it was, like, all Asian. It was uh, Kev Jumba. Nigahiga. It was, uh, what's his, what are their faces? The guys who Wong did Fu? all the sappy romantic. Yes, Wong Fu. Wong Fu. I met Love Wong Fu, Fu in college. Fu. What? Uh, yeah, yeah. Wait, how old they, are you? They came to my college. You look uh, like my I'm, age. like, 30. I'm 32. I'm older. Yeah, I'm up there. I look young. Asian don't raise me. But, Max, bro. like, I'm up there. So, like, like, I met Wong Fu when they were, like, first starting. You're gonna look like that to your seventy, and then you're gonna look like a like a wrinkly old like Chinese guy. All of a sudden. Oh yeah, I can't wait. I'm gonna grow out the goatee. I'm gonna have the long like kung fu beard. Yeah, wait, like so the long white. You met Wong Fu in uh, college. Did you did you go in California? Yeah, cool? yeah, I went to I went to Cal Poly Slow, and then I did some time uh, in like grad school at uh, UCLA. Wow, where'd you go to school? I mean, where where'd you live prior to uh, New York? You're in New York now. That's what I meant. Yeah, uh, grew up in uh, grew up in San Francisco. Oh wow! I went to school there. Yeah, then went to uh, went to college undergrad in like a place called San Luis Obispo, which is like dead middle in um in uh, California. It's known. It's like claim to fame. Uh, USA Today says that it's the happiest city on earth. And uh, if you're white, it's true. But <laughs> if you're not, it's like uh, kind of shit. Yeah, it's like weird because when you grow up in San Francisco, you don't notice that you're Asian, really, because like everybody's just kind of I, I know it's like kind of utopian frou frou. But back in the day, like it was very diverse there. Everyone just treated mm. you as like an American. And then you go to a place that's like 80 percent white. and You're like, oh, I do not feel American here. Mm. <laughs> like it is very, you ever get, very like, different bullied here. or like not bullied, but like get shitted on in that area. Oh, yeah. So, like, Damn. the first time that you get told to, like, go back to your country Oof. or, like, where are you really Classic. from? Like, I remember I was working at Denny's uh, as, like, a like the, the host, right? And I was, like, ringing some white girl up. And then, Working's like, I, I, like, apologized. Yeah, I was, like, I apologized to her. I was, like, oh, sorry. Uh, like, this is taking so long. This is my first time doing this. Or this is my first time here. And she was, like, oh, to the country? And I'm, like, bitch. <laughs> I'm talking to you in fluent English. You like what? You, what bro, program in China? You should have been like, yeah, I first time in country. Okay, sorry. So yeah, sorry. like I understand if I said it like that, right? But it, I'm speaking to you like as I'm speaking to her, and she was like, Ignorance, "Oh, to the country," bro. and I was like, "What?" Ignorance, like. Bro. Yeah, but you know, with BTS, things are getting better. Yeah, you know? dude. So. You know what? Speaking of that shit, bro. I want to give a. I want to give a a moment of like appreciation for BTS culture. Uh, and the third gen of K-pop because without them we would not be uh, as desired. I'll say that, dude. I noticed. I noticed the shift. Like I was on. A, I have a girlfriend oh, yeah. now, but uh, mm -hmm. when I was on dating apps and shit, it was it was a struggle back in like oh, yeah. the the beginning of Tinder and all that, dude. I would yeah. I I would get like one match. A week. Uh, I, was, I was right. I was right there with you, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, dude, BTS. All of a sudden, you're seeing all these motherfucking Korea boos and shit. They're like, oh, you could just tell too. Some of them, some, and then like, um, the girls that were always like, and my girlfriend's one of these. The girls that, uh, kind of always liked every race, but then never thought about Asians. Now started thinking about Asians because like they're now finally sexualized because of yeah. BTS. Um, do you ever uh, listen to like K-pop and all that stuff like back then? Like Big Bang and no, nah, it was okay. you know like all all my like uh, girlfriends back then were Asian because you know it was the same oh. struggle. I didn't even you know like I'm 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 a little bit older than you, so like you know we had all the uh, it was it was dry. It was a desert was back dry. then as well, and you know That's it was it was rough on the dating apps. You probably saw that shit like oh, yeah. hella girls be like everyone but asian guys like specifically yes, they would say yes, no asian dude, guys I've seen that, and i was like 
damn, man. And it was like hella Asian girls who'd be saying that shit on like Tinder and Bumble and all that. And I was like, man, the self-hatred is like rough. And then Dead as ass. you said, like once, <laughs> once like BTS came around and anime came around, oh, like, yeah. ooh, that match went from one to two. And I was like, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Hey, that's a hundred percent increase, baby. bro. If we're yeah. talking stocks, that's just exponential. Plummeted. Yeah, exactly. Let's go. But yeah, um, but it's, no, it's been great. Like, uh, I have a joke that's like, uh, like a what people don't understand is like Asian guys look at BTS like black people look at Martin Luther King. Like they they broke down the doors mm, so that we could really like. Yeah, that's big you know, facts, like, dude. So pretty damn. much what you're saying is BTS is Martin Luther King. That, that is yeah, <laughs> the Asian Martin Luther King. <laughs> what is, what's the thing? It's like, hey, oh, we, that's on one of my profile pictures now. No I'm fucking fishing. way. <laughs> yeah, I'm fishing, and I. I that 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 gets likes the the likes yeah. for for all young asian men do this shit have an anime picture Instant. and a picture with a like a cute ass puppy and like do you, so you the, like asian girls specifically or like just only or no i date i date everyone but like you know before bts the only people who would date me were asians <laughs> you know I feel that. specifically Dude. it was like like filipino girls would always like really would always want to date me yeah. do you have a girlfriend right and now and i got along with it yeah do you have a girlfriend right now no, do not. You guys know the deal. Just bombard him. <laughs> We're in Manhattan. But, um, what's no, up? you know what's funny? Uh, I make that joke, and like, even though I have a small podcast, uh, I made that joke on the last podcast with this guy in Germany um, that I met, and he he's into Asian girls, right? So I made that joke on the podcast, and next thing you know, he's getting DMs, and he was like, "I don't oh. know, I don't know if it's from your podcast," and I was like, "I don't fucking know." I I thought it was small, but then all of a sudden, there's like three girls that just give him because he had, he had this fetish for um Vietnamese girls, like okay, what? Yeah, so specific. He said that they're, of all the Asians, they're the most thick, like slim thick. I don't, really? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I thought all Asians are the same, bro. You know. <laughs> I'll be honest. I would never date a Vietnamese girl. Vietnamese, Vietnamese girl and Korean girl. Nah, I'm out. I'm okay, out, bro. So that's the one that you don't do. No, two Korean Korean girls and uh, Vietnamese girls. I've done it in the past, and it's just like, what's wrong with them? Let's let's it's stereotype. It's fun. It's fun with the Vietnamese girls, but I just end. Up, I feel like I'm gonna end up stabbed. Like, oh, they're ratchet. Just, they're ratchet, yeah. bro. They're they're gonna start going to car meets and shit, and then like, yeah. uh... <laughs> too much. It's too much, it's too bro. much. And then uh, the Koreans are too, uh, not all, not all, right? This is this is just generalizations and we have a fun, but you know, you know, a couple of ratchet Vietnamese girls. Oh, and yeah, like a lot of them. A lot, a lot of Korean, a lot of Korean girls are like high maintenance, but now the the the, oh. the Chinese girls are getting that way. Now that they, now that these girls got money, they're getting like, they're like, oh, what's your, what's your salary? Like, what car mm. you, like, I knew Korean girls like growing up. Maybe it's changed now. Maybe they're a little bit more like less uh, materialistic, but you know, like, I like heard Korean girls be like, I'm not going to date a guy who doesn't unless he drives a Mercedes. At least that was like the bare minimum. Dude, it's, you know, it's the culture of uh, I would say, like, I don't know what it is, but like Asian culture, mainly the big popular ones. So like Koreans, um, I wouldn't say Japanese, but like Korean is a great example. They view American lifestyle in their like in a Hollywood way where they're like, Oh, I want to be as pale as possible. I want to be as this as possible. I want to be as rich as possible. So when they come to America, the first thing they're thinking is let me get a name brand bag. Let me get a fucking Mercedes. All this, like they're very, they become materialistic because they have this view of like, Oh, that's, that's superior excellence. I got to get there. I, and, hmm. and they will, and the girls, they want that. And th I think that's part of the reason I, I blame Hollywood, bro. I blame Hollywood. <laughs> well, it's, um, I know uh, I have a fr I have like friends who like lived in Korea and had like a uh, Korean girlfriends mm -hmm. that in Korea and there Japan and and China the appearances actually fucking matter oh, about the jobs 100%. that you get mm -hmm. you know so you have to keep up those appearances like when you see those like uh, Chinese kids that are walking around with all those like Supreme and name bands they have to wear those top end like Balenciagas because if they get you know if they get photoed in America and they're just in like street clothes. That can affect their parents or that yeah. can affect like their their family business. I was so like, weird. oh, they're maybe they're doing well. So I, I under I want to hate on them because like they're corny, but like at the same time, it's just like, yeah, you know, I get it. Like you gotta you find be... you gotta find yourself a Amer a, like a full American Asian, like us. You know what I'm saying? ABCs. Yeah, ABCs. What exactly, bro. I, I feel yeah. like I feel like you're you're like a homie that I met like a while ago and we're just rekindling now. 
because you, you, you're I talking think, like me and shit. <laughs> well, I like, honestly, I feel like, you know, people, we, we all like to, especially in America, everybody's like preaching like, oh, you're a unique snowflake. And I'm, I don't really, I think there's like a million of me out there. Hell yeah, dude. And I just got lucky, you know, and like, I was just brave enough to uh, endure the wrath of my parents to be like, hey, I'm going to be a clown for a living. Like you <laughs> suffered through communism and fought your way over to America so that your son could be a clown. Uh, <laughs> it's not going to work out for like 10 years and you're going to hate him for it. But eventually, hey, YouTube eventually. is not going to die, bro. But speaking of since you brought up YouTube, let's talk about it. Um, So your channel, bro, what what would I classify if I were to classify it based off the videos that I watched? Just to let you know, I found you off of and I, I, I told you this. It was the. um champions leagues for like dummies kind of, or like dumb americans pretty much kind of yeah. to summarize um it was one of your latest videos i think your latest right that's uploaded yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah, was yeah. like 10 days ago it, it it went on my feed and i think it's because i uh, i uh i watch a lot of like maxwell and a lot of like uh soccer comment funny commentators type thing yeah and that's the maxwell i've known that kid for like four years and that dude is like so hungry he's like hungry. i remember when he had like a hundred followers and he was he was like pestering me like back then i was like who's this kid um That's but i knew so he was funny. gonna like he was you can tell with some of these kids like they're fucking gonna make it they got it because they got it in. yeah because they're just like consistent and they got the hunger like a lot of people they come at you and you they they're there for like a month or two so like yeah. the fact that you've done 41 of these like all you need to do yeah. is just stay consistent and you'll eventually get there. Well, the you thing know? about the podcast to me is like, uh, I'll, I'll go right back into Maxwell and your channel. But the thing with the podcast to me is I love doing it. It's easy to do because I love it. And, um, I'm, I'm not thinking about it in like, Oh, I'm going to get big right away. It's because I'm connecting with people. And for instance, like you for say, if this podcast goes up, you post it in your, uh, the little like feed post of your Instagram, that's a good chance that I'm going to get some like, some clout from that and then like just slowly and to me it's it's not even about just the clout i want to meet some cool ass people dude i met like um from from this i, I got to meet a ufc fighter that uh who's also vietnamese fucking sick that was let's uh, go yeah that let's was go. we need more sick, asians dude. in mma dude like, i know Korean dude, zombie's uh, not bad dude, but you uh, know. he got his ass beat recently but <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah like shit like that like i i just and like i've gotten so many great opportunities from just the lifestyle i live and like even though the number isn't big to me, I'm just like really grateful because like I got to go to, um, you know, Charlotte FC had a, a new soccer team in mm -hmm. the MLS. Yeah. I got to go to the opening game from this podcast because I met Filippo of a uh, tactical manager. He hit me up. He was like, yo, I'm going to be Charlotte. Come through. I was like, that's actually where I met Maxwell. And speaking of Maxwell, he's in my next podcast who will be next week. But I film with he's coming here uh, because we live like an hour away from each other, which is crazy. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, like, what are okay, the odds of that? Yeah. He's coming right yeah. after you. I had him plan first. And then I had you, and then you were like, oh, yeah, I know him. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, Asian people, you know? like <laughs> He's Asian? Yeah, motherfucker. You didn't know that? Oh, I, did, I never seen him. <laughs> I've never seen, oh, you've like, never seen him? Dude, no, I just, oh like, I've only experienced him through text messages. You want to hear some just, uh, yeah, fucking funny stuff? Sorry, I, I, could, I cut you off. But um, he's he's also Vietnamese. He's Vietnamese and white. Ah, oh, he's Hapa. Yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's he's like a product of uh, he's like a Vietnamese sandwich. He's a product of of those two cultures. Like, let's be honest here. Like, as much as we hate colonization, if your food is good, we'll keep it, right? Big facts. You know, yeah. Like, you got the the pate, and like, we wouldn't have pho if it wasn't for the French. Dude, pho, dude. Favorite I gotta tell food. you something. I I just was recently in New York City. And um, we couldn't meet up because I was I was really busy with my sister and cousin. How but dare you? I know, How right? fucking oh, dare you not I'm meet so up sorry. with the internet stranger you just met? I'm so sorry. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're meeting with a sister. Well, I was scared. I was scared of getting Chris Hansen, you know? You were hitting me up. I'm a little bit younger than you, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, you know, you don't know true. if Chris Hansen's going to come out. <laughs> um, this is true. Well, even though it's in reverse, technically. But anyways, uh, I had the best restaurant pho I ever had in New York City. My sister had been hyping this place up, and I was just like, uh, all right, we'll see. Because, like, my mom is going to make the best pho, you know, like, at the end of the day. Because mm -hmm. mom's cooking. And then I went here. It, the place is called Five, but with a five. Like, five, five the number, mm -hmm. I-V-E, spices, tacos, and, and banh, banh mi. And I know you're thinking, like, tacos? Brooklyn? 
Talk, they, no, have no, no. they have one in Brooklyn. They have one in Brooklyn. Yeah. They have two locations. One is in Brooklyn and one is in Soho. And mm-hmm. we went to the one in Soho because it was a little bit closer. And I'm thinking like nothing of it. I'm just like, oh, yeah. Well, f- first of all, the name says taco in it. So I'm like, what the fuck? So we go in there yeah. and the layout's sick because they have this secret bookshelf that like mm-hmm. is actually a bathroom. That's fucking sick. I love that. Um, and then when I was ordering, I ordered their special uh, pho which had everything in it. It had like this uh, ribs, braised ribs, which is like like the classic Southern, South Vietnam. I'm from South Vietnam way of cooking mm-hmm. it. Yeah. And then we got these tacos that they made out of Vietnamese crepes. So they're like savory crepes. And mm-hmm. that's, I was like, dude, that's fucking genius. And a dude, I'm telling you, easily one of, I, honestly, probably the most memorable meal of all of New York City. Really? And not wow. terribly expensive at all. I almost ate at that place one time. You need but to, but I didn't have cash. Yes, <laughs> that okay. was like, I literally walked into that place because my friend, who's Vietnamese, like recommended it to me. Yeah, but he didn't hype it up. He was like, "It's pretty good." Really? <laughs> like, I was like, well, yeah, that's what he said. Coming from a South Vietnamese guy, I don't like Northern yeah. style pho. Uh, okay. There's a different yeah. style. That shit was like, I, and I've been, I've tried pho like a lot of places. I've been traveling, and like that place, I was like, damn, that's the best pho I've had. I honestly no, nah, but you recommend it. Like pho is my favorite food. If oh. if I was put on death row, you don't like, like that would be my that would be my final meal. You don't want a Vietnamese girl, fun. bro. No, doesn't make any I don't. Sense. <laughs> I've done it before. I don't want to get stabbed. They're very beautiful. <laughs> Did she stab they're you? Very hot. They're they're very fun, but it's too much. It's yeah, too much. Yeah, I like yeah. a I like a nice uh I I like a like a nice uh Americanized uh, Japanese girl. Oh, is like, very specific, is my guy. Usually, like what what like has done well for me, but like my last girl, uh, my last girlfriend, longtime girlfriend, was like a Latina girl from the okay. hood in LA, and then I moved over here to, to Flatbush in Brooklyn, so I was dating a Jamaican girl over there. Oh, and now shit. I'm in Manhattan, so like you dated I don't know, a maybe next girl? date, like hmm, you mean, yeah, you, bro. Do you know how hard it is in our culture to date a like a black girl? Um. It is You're a legend. if you it is if you have to take them home. But my parents are on the other <laughs> side of the country, so oh, wait, your parents are uh, oh your parents are in Cali. That's right. Yeah, and okay. they're definitely like if I brought a black girl home, it probably I don't think they'd be outright racist, but it there'd be tension because when I brought like <laughs> my last girlfriend home and she was like Latina, like there was like some weird shit that went on. Like you don't realize how racist your old Asian parents oh are until like you're older, you Dude, know? What, no, even when you're young sometimes. So I'll, I'll never forget this. I'm going to tell you a quick story. When I was uh, uh, 10, I had a, I was, I was like just finished showering. I, I came into my room, like I'm about to change, right? I'm in a fucking towel and my mm-hmm. mom's banging on my door. She's like, oh, and she's, she barely speaks English. Like she's very like OG Vietnamese. My dad can speak English, but my dad, my mom was like, uh, loon, loon, uh, look, 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 look. Uh, she was saying it in Vietnamese. She was like, uh, there's a black guy, black guy at the mm-hmm. door. I scared black guy. And I'm like, oh yeah. shit. Like, you know, like, what's up? You know, I'm like 11. So I'm like, I, I put on a shirt real quick. I come out there. It's my friend who is 11 years old and he's wearing a wife <laughs> beater. And because he's wearing a wife beater and black, threat. She, yeah. she's a threat. Yeah. And shout out to Reggie. <laughs> yeah. This is asking shout out to Reggie. We're sorry, man. Yeah. They, they just come from, they just, they just ignorant, you know? Yeah. Like, this is like another thing that white people don't understand. It's like, uh, Asian people are racist as fuck. Oh, just, super racist. They say, they just say it in a different language that you don't understand. Yep. Nail salons, yeah. you're, they're probably saying something. I'm just playing. <laughs> No, they definitely are. Let's be well, honest. We we own nail time. salons, so I don't want to like hype it up too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your guys' the nail salon, the Cambodians are the the donut shops. We're the laundry mats. Damn, you're the, really on top of it. Yeah, that's exactly. I took Asian American studies. Okay, you know, okay. in in college, but you're like, cultured? yeah, you, if you have Cambodian friends, like you know, one of them has like a. A uncle who runs like a donut at least that's what yeah, it's like in, in california yeah no yeah. i i no, i think it is everywhere in the u.s um how long have you been doing youtube uh i think i started in 2016 okay so you're yeah, actually 2016 wow yeah, oftentimes yeah, yeah. when i talk to youtubers uh on the podcast they start they're like exponential growth from the beginning so they're like people who are bigger than me but like they've been but i've i started like um three or four years ago. So you started even before that. That's awesome, dude. 
Yeah, mine was not exponential growth. And honestly, like if you look at my social blade, it's just like, uh, is this guy going to be successful? Like it's just up. It's a roller coaster is is my social blade. I just like grow in wow. in huge spurts and then I like die down and then I grow in huge spurts. What, what do you when, when was the moment that you realized like how how long did it take you into it where you realized like, oh, shit, it's happening? Um, like. So, so like my background is I've always wanted to be like an entertainer since I was like a kid. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I always knew, like, I, like, I think I was like eight or nine and I made someone laugh and I was like, oh, this feels good. Like, and it's, it doesn't bring any evil into the world. Like I want to do yeah, more yeah. of this. And I then like, like that. from that point on, I was like, I think I just want to like be an entertainer for life. Mm -hmm. And then like, so that's why I was like, I went to school for like theater, which right. is like, uh, I made my dad cry when I told him I wanted to like, <laughs> like I can, this is true. This is not like Jackie Chan, huh? This is this is like real talk. We were driving on the highway. Oh, I remember, shit. and then he was like, "So where are you going to go to college?" And I was like, "I think we're going to go to Cal Poly for theater." And he pulled over the car, <gasps> and this is the only time I've ever seen him. He started crying. Oh, <laughs> it's the only time I've ever seen my dad cry. And then he like looks over with like tears in his hands, and he was like, "Do you even have talent? Do you even, <laughs> do you even practice? <laughs> like, what are you going to do for a living?" And I was like, yeah, I think I'm pretty good. <laughs> and he was like, you're going to be homeless. Oh, my but God. To his credit, he let me he let me do he let me do that shit. And then That's I went dope. to like UCLA to be a television writer. Um, but and yeah, so I was like uh, I, I was in L.A. for like uh, six years before coming over to Brooklyn. Wow. And um, yeah, I tried to be a, a Hollywood TV writer out there. And that did not work out. So I was like, I'm playing a lot of video games. So I might as well post that shit on YouTube. And um, uh, I was just like following people. Do you know like Channy Sports or like... Uh, I don't know Channy. Any yeah. of those guys. Yeah, like Channy Sports is um, another like FIFA guy that... Okay. Uh, he I only was know like, like two or three. Like, yeah, he was like my favorite guy because he did career mode as well. And I remember when I had like 2,000 subs, mm -hmm. I was doing the same... We were both doing Wolfsburg. At the same time, oh, and wow. he just randomly saw my uh, one of my first videos, and he commented. And at the time, he was like, I think he was at like 90k or like 70k. So for me, he was like big time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the guy that like I idolized, and he was like, um, he was like, hey, your content's really good, and you can make it far if you keep going. And that like honestly, like I owe him so much because to have just like one guy rubber stamp you, yeah, you know is like no that's such like a big thing that's you know? so huge dude like man I, i'm thinking about that like if something like that happened to me i'd be like all right well it has happened i think i'm trying to like remember all the time people saying things but that's so fucking i'm so glad that he did that because if you didn't c continue that career and i noticed like with your channel you also shifted you went from um originally your oldest videos are fifa videos and then yeah. it eventually evolved and now you're at a point where you do like I, I, what would you classify? I would say it's a funny. My elevator pitch is I talk shit about sports and history. There you go. Okay, I can. Yeah. I like that. And also your biggest video, you sent it to me, which I recommend everyone listening to check it out. It's actually like, uh, it almost felt like drunk history off of Comedy Central. Yeah. Like it yeah, was yeah, like yeah. a funny take, but also like you learn a lot of shit on Chinese and the downfall of China. Yeah, uh, that was your most popular video, and also like I learned so much shit. I didn't even know that they had they still have a statue up of this Nazi guy who like kind of like yeah, bro. Fucked with... That dude's a hero. That dude's a <laughs> hero guy. A Nazi is a hero in China. A, a not yeah, and like a legitimate hero. If you if you actually read that story, you might be like like what the fuck is that? But once you get it, you're like oh okay, there's there were good Nazis. I guess <laughs> <laughs> it's like. The world wow. is a very complex place, right? Yeah. And when you grow up in America and you get like American history, it's just like, oh well, it's well one way, yeah, yeah. It's it's very very McDonald's like yeah. uh, of what you get, and it's very like American and Eurocentric. Like you just don't. I like I don't know what happened in Africa. Do you know what happened in Africa over nah. the past like hundred years? All, no all I know is like China's like stealing all the minerals right now. That's yeah. all I know. Yeah, you know, and then um, like. Uh, I have questions with your acting stuff. I got to piss real quick, really bad, because I drank too much water, so I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Drink your matcha beer, bro. I will. But, uh, ladies, I am single. So, uh, if any of you uh, 
you know, if you're not Vietnamese, and no, I'm kidding. I'll actually date Vietnamese girls too. I don't, I don't really discriminate. I'm just fucking around. But uh, you know, like uh, any girls in anime, any girls into into a little uh, you know, K-pop. Let me know. Let me know. I don't know if he's gonna edit this in. But uh, to all my Jamaican girls out there, what's up? So I don't know the science behind uh, having a small PP and being Asian and also having a small bladder, but I think that's the case with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, <clears throat> so back. That, to, go ahead. I will say, I will say on the on the small PP thing, it's like it's like a shitty stereotype. But the more that I think about it, it's like the only time that you're allowed as an Asian guy to have low expectations, and it's okay. <laughs> that's right? Because you just gotta. Yeah, if you really think about it, like everything about growing up Asian in America is like there's such pressure on you. Like you just feel like like uh, like your whole family is counting on you like half the time. And, it, and you just let like your ancestor down if you don't do it. Yeah. But your dick size, that's like the one thing that people are like, oh, if you show up with like a normal size dick, you're like, oh, I'm pleasantly surprised. Dude, that that you know? was one of the best compliments I had in bed besides like a, like after performance, like when when they the girl goes, oh, it, it's a little bit bigger than I thought. Or like, it, yeah. it's like a pretty good, it's good size. I was like, yeah. oh, thanks, dude. <laughs> yeah, like my biggest, my biggest like compliment was like when I was with the Jamaican girl. Like she oh. was like, you're 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 in too deep, and I'm like, let's go <laughs> in too deep for all of us. For Bro, all of us, you're guys. the one percent. You're the one percent. <laughs> yeah, one percent of the I'm the Yao Ming of the Asians. The is, Ming. is what I am. Yeah, Do you like name that your was uh, that little Yao Ming. Uh, like that was um I remember like I was on a stream and I think it was like my my one of my proudest like stream moments was uh I had my girlfriend on at the time it was a girl mm-hmm. from LA and then like obviously the stream's gonna be like so how big is it you know and then she was like surprisingly big <laughs> and I was like let's go think of the let's biggest go. egg roll you've ever had <laughs> biggest egg roll I I don't want to get in trouble because that's how Gucci got in it was it Gucci or was it what was what was the Italian brand you know oh yeah you, Gucci you about yeah this? yeah did, it was I like a girl who was like trying to pick up though. like a yeah I think it was Gucci like they were they were trying to do like uh pick up like a really big egg roll and she couldn't pick it up with the chopsticks and then she was like giggling about it so it was like a but it was like uh you know but they're Italian you yeah. know like the, being racist and being Italian is kind of synonymous dude now. like also, what are you gonna do I have been in Italy as an Asian they don't have a fucking Asian there, dude. There was like three other people, and you get looked at everywhere you go. There's just like, yeah, yeah. there the was like, hey, this? Jackie Chan, yeah, like, yeah, how's yeah. it going? Yeah, yeah. I, honestly, I'm gonna say in Italy, they might be more racist towards Asians than black people. That's a pretty like it's really? a close. It's a close one, dude. Because um, I'm I'm thinking and like. They're really racist toward black people. They are. They are. <laughs> like, They're pretty racist. Throw towards bananas us too, on bro. the field, racist toward toward black true, people. True. Do you know the story of Lukaku? Yes. Time at Inter. Yes, yeah. dude. That like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That their their own fan ultra, their head of their own, basically like their their head of their fan base at Inter, like wrote him a personal note saying that like, oh no, like hey, hey, they're just being like, it's okay, racism's okay. It's just like a thing we do here. We're just trying to like. Get into other people's heads. And listen, if if you were on the other team, we'd do it to you too. Like, it's nothing personal. Like, to them, it's like so, in, like, racism is just like so ingrained in them that they don't, they can't even fathom. Like, yeah. Not, that would not be being it. Yeah. It's yeah. so weird. They're like, they're so behind on being quote unquote woke. <laughs> but I love Italy, which is what's crazy. Have you ever been to Europe? Yeah. And I've been to Italy. <laughs> it's dope. Like, their food yeah, is amazing. Yeah. I love it, dude. Like, maybe my favorite food out of, out of the Europeans. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah amazing fashion amazing cars like i'm a ferrari fan but oh, like i yeah. know that like yeah if i met enzo ferrari he'd be like this chink like yeah, you know like, like i, I know that you. yeah <laughs> um so let's talk about uh a little bit of the soccer side since we mentioned it um you you played fifa do you still play fifa no oh wow i really? actually don't Too yeah busy now huh no i well actually kind of but it's just like I did six years of FIFA and I was wow. just like so fucking bored of it. Like, yeah. um, I blew up doing like experiments, which was just like, what is a team full of Messi's? Oh, like, like I've up seen against like a bunch of Ronaldo's and that kind of stuff. Like, what's the greatest Man United team of all time versus the greatest Liverpool team of all time? And now there's like a million copycats and, and that type of shit. So like, what? it just became like, I wasn't motivated to do it anymore. 
And these kids that were coming up were just hungrier yeah. and doing it better than me. So I was just like, I don't have that gas anymore for this type of content. So that's why I switched over to more video essays. Cause that was after a while, like when you do YouTube, you don't watch the content that you do. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I never watch Dude, any that's piece of content. So fucking true. I yeah. never watch. Well, I rarely watch food tours unless I'm trying to like see or like travel videos, which is what mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. But yeah. Um, Go ahead. Yeah. So it's like you, you run out of that dopamine that gives yeah. you that, that motivation to do that type of content. And the last thing you want to do when you're, when you're doing that for work or for your hobby is to like watch more of it. That's So funny, So I was, dude. after six years, I was like, I think I'm like done. And creatively, it was just like dog shit to yeah. do. Like there was no real creativity in it. I wasn't really like expressing like what I wanted to do. And I yeah. was just like, I went to school to be a writer and to like <laughs> be a little bit more creative than like, oh, uh, here's here's Messi versus Ronaldo for the sixth time. So like I made like a really risky thing because that's how I got to the first 100K. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a lot of channels like try to transition and then fail. So like that existential fear of, if I do this and I flop, I'm going to be working at Trader Joe's. Yeah. You know, like, but um, I got wow. really lucky. Like, I was able to switch over. And, of course, you're going to lose some of your old audience. Yeah. Um, But um, I, I got lucky that, like, some of those stuff, like, went viral. And I was able wow. to actually transition into that content really, really uh, quicker. Year. I, like, gave myself a year, yeah. right? I was like, I think it's going to take a year for people to, like, I'm going to lose a lot of subscribers because my demo was going to be a lot going to become a lot older and yeah. then um and then like i'm gonna give myself a year and if that fucks up then i think i'm just gonna like like not go from full-time and get like a part-time job like i had I already conceded that that's very inspirational to hear from someone like me because i um i've been battling with my main channel my podcast will always be this way because i like it uh my main channel I find that I always lose interest in specific topics that I do for like after a year or something. Cause I originally four years ago, I started as a fitness YouTuber and I, mm. I would do fitness vlogs and stuff. And like, um, then it gradually, I noticed that there was popularity in food that I did. Cause I did like full days of eating. And so I just mm -hmm. did more food content. And then I, I went to food tours where I would go travel and like charge restaurants and stuff and do tours mm. off of it. And then, like, I just keep changing, and, and I, I fear completely changing my demo because from fitness, I, I was fine with changing that because I didn't have much followers anyways at that point. So I switched yeah. completely to food and travel. And then, like, it's it's really taxing doing food and travel because it's a lot of vlogging, and vlogging is fun, but it's a lot of work. Editing, and it's a lot of, like, you got to make it somewhat different each time because you don't want to be doing the same shit all the time. And so, um, I don't know. I was, I'm really fearful, but I want to switch my, my content to like more of like, do you watch Cody Ko? Do you know who Cody Ko is? Okay. So he's like, um, it's like a point and shoot at the camera, making jokes, uh, quick humor, uh, and commentating about other videos. Like it, it he could be cringing at like a specific video. And oh, just yeah, make so it like a commentary channel. Yes, yeah. uh, similar to yours, but with a face to it versus mm -hmm. like how yours is more like commentary, but like, um, what is it called? A uh, video essay. Yeah, yeah. exactly. B-roll. Yeah. So like I've always wanted to do that because I feel like that's one, more creative. Two, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's e not easier to do, but it's easier to just start and do because it's just camera. You don't have to actually travel and fucking do yeah. shit. So uh, I, I've always feared that. So it's very inspirational to hear that you were able to shift, able to do it successfully. Will I do it? I don't know. Will I be successful? I, I don't know. <laughs> I also uh, don't recommend this to a lot of people. Like, like yeah, if yeah, you, yeah. because if you can find a niche, right? Mm -hmm. Like, because that's that's kind of the thing on YouTube is you kind of need to find your niche and you need to be consistent about it. Yeah. Um. Uh. You. You. We were talking about this. I think before the podcast started that you listen to to Flagrant Two. If yeah. You, yeah. Uh. Have you listened to the one with Jake Tran on it? Uh. Fellow I, Vietnamese guy. I, I, I watched the clip on it. Yeah. 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 Not yeah, the yeah. whole one, it, though. If you watch the whole one on it, like, he brings up, he basically, like, builds out, like, how he built his channel. And mm -hmm. he talks about, like, uh, he read this book that I'm reading now. It's called, like, Blue Ocean Strategies, where YouTube is is so saturated, right? It's the second biggest, like, a search engine in the world. Mm -hmm. And the thing with, like, 
fitness and FIFA and uh, food and travel is they're so saturated on YouTube that if you're not in that top 10%, you're going to get flooded out. Okay. It's as simple as that. Like you're, you're in too much competition. So what he did, which I thought was hyper intelligent, what the book Blue Ocean Strategies talks about is finding a niche that is not being serviced yet and going into less competitive spaces, essentially a blue ocean, as opposed to going into a red ocean, which is like hyper competitive. And if you're starting behind that ball, right? Like if you're starting behind everybody else, like the Mike Changs of the world in like food and like travel, you're never going to eclipse that guy. But if you can put like a unique spin on it or like a, instead of food and travel, it could be like, I don't know, something else like something else about travel or yeah. something else about the culture, like the must see desserts or like the must see like something adjacent or yeah. some niche that isn't like service is probably like the biggest way to grow, you know? Interesting. And like, um, I think that's like where I was able to do pretty well because like, I was able to go into something that wasn't being serviced. Cause I saw it's like, Oh, like football is dope. Both footballs are dope, but like the other country doesn't know about it yet. Yeah. So okay. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try to give them like, I've enjoyed this my whole entire life. And before the internet, y'all motherfuckers didn't know that this shit's dope. So I'm going to try to give you that. So, and then like, Oh, if I do a clueless guide on sports, you can really do a clueless guy on anything. Like, it's just anything, any niche thing that I think is dope, I could do a video on, which, like, I tried to do with the anime. Didn't do as hot as, as the sports stuff. <laughs> I didn't know so you, you did still, that. Yeah, so you still got to you still gotta service, like, your core audience, especially on YouTube, because I'm sure That's you've been on channels. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure you've been on channels that, like, that try to make the transition, and you're like, yeah. no, 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 I did not subscribe for yeah. you to be, a, you know, a blogger or a podcast. You're not interesting enough. So like that was, you know, that was the fear, you know, you always have this imposter syndrome of I'm not interesting enough. I'm not funny enough. Like who, who the fuck cares about like what I do, but I actually wow, yeah. believe that like, if you just stay consistent and you just keep on switching up the formula and keep on throwing spaghetti against the wall until something sticks, like you'll eventually get there. Wow. Okay. That was fucking insightful, bro. I just feel like I talked to Bruce Lee. Um, so you okay. water, my friend. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to have to sit down and think about it because that's the hard, the hard part is not completely doing a 180 because I almost want to, because the content that I want to make is so much different than the content I was making. But then like, mm -hmm. I'm thinking like, but then I'll lose a lot of the core audience. You're correct. Um, so I well, got to figure well, how out many, something. How many, how uh, many subscribers do you have on YouTube right now? Uh, you, about 5,000. 5,000. Easy. Do whatever you want. Yeah. Like anything but be before a hundred K do whatever you want. Okay. Like it's not. So just say and, fuck it. Yeah. And I say this to everybody, right? If you can get the first 100, the first 100 subscribers is harder than 100K. Yeah. Because nobody will fuck with you if you have under 100. Like, and that that next thousand is really fucking hard. But everything after that, as long as you stay consistent, like, to all notes. the young YouTubers out there, like, I would stay consistent in that, that one thing if you start to grow in it, right? But if you aren't, then just like fucking throw spaghetti against the wall until you start to grow. And then once you start to grow, stick with that. Stick yeah. stick in that niche until you hit 100K is what I would say. When you upload a video, and I want to uh, – this is a good question for people listening that are looking to get into YouTube or is already into YouTube and want to learn how to grow. I, I, Maxwell, I know you're listening. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but No, that kid, I'm about know, to he's, take tips from him. So, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's a hustler, dude. Um, yeah. He doesn't do much outside of just grind for YouTube. I know that. Uh, but so with YouTube and when you upload the process of what is your process and uh, what are the not like tricks of the trade, but like so much t as tips as you when you're uploading. So first of all, how long does it take you to usually make one of your videos? Um, I think that's my sticking point right now is that like I'm a little bit of a perfectionist on when it comes to the content that I put out. Yeah. So I think personally I do it wrong. Like I take too long. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, 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 my advice is like. Put out shit. Perfection is the uh, perfection is the I enemy agree. of good. I agree with like, that. Like, especially in your when you're starting out, just put out shit. But as long, but stay consistent. That's like way, like uh, way way better yeah. when it comes to YouTube and going to the gym. Just like, just do it right. Just like show up. Yeah. And if you show up, you beat. It's it's really true. If you keep showing up, you beat like ninety percent of the people. 
Interesting. Like, and once you like build it into like a habit, then like that's the way to go. But my tip for young YouTubers out there is um, there's no school for YouTube, right? right? Right. There's no classes you could take. So when you're starting out, just try to make your content as close as possible to the people that, to the content that you want it to be, right? So if there's a YouTuber that you like, copy his shit. And a lot of people don't want to hear this because they want to be like some original snowflake, like, and they want to just like be original from the beginning. And some people can do that, but I'm sorry. Not a lot of you guys are that talented to start with, to start right, with, right, but right. you can become like any type of skill. You can become that good, but early on you need to become competent. And the way you do that is you just copy the people that, that you like, you copy the content, you do the same thing. You see what their thumbnails you analyze. Like we talk about and Mr. Beast and was like that. Yeah, when exactly. Started, yeah. yeah. Like Mr. Beast used to be like a, just a fan, a sub in yeah. like someone else's YouTube channel, but he stayed consistent and he kept on going and he had the drive. Right. And that could be like the next generation. Um, you just copy who you like for the first year. Don't do it for subs. Don't look at your, your sub count or how much money you're getting just for the first year. Just yeah. try to like make content that you like, get a little bit better every video and try to get it as close as possible to wow. the guy that you like. And then once you have that confidence, then you start adding your own twist to it, right? Then you start finding your own voice and you eventually branch out and try to find a blue ocean or a unique niche. And uh, my other big thing is pay for thumbnails and learn Photoshop. Like, What do you mean by pay thumb for thumbnails? If you're not good at Photoshop, pay people. Pay kids for, pay kids for uh, making your thumbnails because thumbnails, honestly, like in today's meta, is equally as important as the actual video, if not more important. Okay. Like having um, things you need to look out for is like, because when most people look at YouTube, right, it's on their phone. They're scrolling through the things you need that thumbnail that will make a person stop. Yeah. And it's also in conjunction with the title. Like, so look when you're on YouTube and you're trying to be a YouTuber, look for the things that catch your attention, right? Like what is the title? What is the thumbnail? What made you stop on that? Like those small things are what turn your channel to the next level that will actually catch you into the next level. Like when Maxwell was first starting out, um, you know, when all of us were starting out, his thumbnails are shit, our, our titles are way too long. And now you look at his, uh, his best new one. It's very concise. It's yeah. like why PSG is a failure, right? And it has three bright names on it. Very high contrast on the three faces. Yeah. Uh, very clean. Yeah. Not messy at all. You know, so like. Pun um, intended. Messy. Yeah. So it's like when you see that and, and that's the thing that mm -hmm. like goes viral. Like that's the type of, and the algorithm's adjusting every it, single yeah. day. So you, you gotta, you gotta understand where the game is going. Change is eternal and you have to like adapt, but really for like all the young YouTubers out there is just like, um, copy who you think is best and then throw your own spin on it and get good at thumbnails. Man, thumbnails. I learned so much from just that. My final thing with that, and it's something that I'm just curious about is, okay. So thumbnails you're saying is like of utmost importance title. You want it concise. Um, the content of the video obviously has to be at least up to standard. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. But uh, do you, when you guys when you upload, is there any focus on tags? It so that used to be a huge thing on YouTube, but now like there are certain videos that I f have forgotten to do the tags and they've gone viral. You just um, uploaded it. Yeah, tags are because too many people were abusing tags, so they 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 mm. made the algorithm. So basically anytime like the algorithm gets abused, they, they flip it and then they make it so that like, it's a little bit different every single time. Um, so tags don't really matter. Keywords do like, um, there's also the concept of evergreen and tentpole. Do, are, are you familiar with these concepts? Evergreen. No. So like a tentpole is like if, when, when Batman's coming out, right? Okay. Then you make a video on, on, on Batman. That will blow up, especially if you put that video out two to three weeks before it comes out. That's like the most optimal way to do it. Because then when it's at its peak, then your video is already in circulation and it'll be distributed to a bunch of people. But after Batman's done, that video is not going to do as well, right? So that's one model of growth is you just keep on seeing like what's the current topics mm. and then you throw yourself in there. So that's that's how like all these channels, uh, yeah, that's how okay. all these channels that are like, 
I have unlocked this like cheat code. If you keep on doing like videos on other YouTubers that are popular, like Sunny V2 is like a guy or that guy who does like before they were famous, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. They're hacking the algorithm because like these are already people who are being searched up a lot. Mm. So like also with like sports people, as you do like videos on Messi or Ronaldo and that kind of shit, like that's kind of how you do it. And even me, like I'm doing it with the NBA finals. I'm doing it with uh, Champions League. Like these are 10 poles. But then Evergreen is something that you could just always come back to and look at and it'll be always good. Like the China video is going to be Evergreen. I did a video on the collapse of Manchester United. Every oh, time, I see. What you're every saying. time Manchester United gets humiliated, ooh, 10K more views on that video. So automatic. When you're looking at this Evergreen versus uh, Ten Pole model, yeah. Do you, are you personally? Do, are you looking to do both, or are you looking to do more of one? Um, it's harder to go for Evergreen, right? Because you don't know. Yeah, it's quicker, right, to grow quickly uh with tent pole um personally i do both like um like for the evergreen stuff i like like that's more like the history stuff when i like to kind of be like nostalgia yeah. and like look back at stuff or more analytical wow. about like certain things but tent pole is probably the quickest way to grow and um like even then like i think like some people like still enjoy because i still get views on like euro 2020 you know, like I still get views on the Premier League, but it's wow. just like I still get views on the Super Bowl. And that's just been done for like a couple of weeks. So I hope the hope is that like they enjoy the content. They just want to watch yeah. like more of me talking shit. But um, I think like a mix of both is is good. Right. Because it's yeah. like uh, it's kind of like the old Hollywood model of residuals. The evergreens will pay your rent forever. You know, because they're if they're on YouTube and people are just watching it forever, yeah. you're always going to get those residuals. Um, but if you want to grow, I would say like tent pole is probably the best way to go. Like name drop popular YouTubers or current events. Like everybody was talking about Will Smith getting slapped. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason. I, like I'll, uh, I'll Andrew look. Schultz, like they they want to talk about all those current events. Like you on this podcast should talk about the hottest current events and post those clips right yeah, and dude, try to oh like get in there the whole the hardest part about clips to me is i i i help my sister run um three businesses right so it's hard yeah. for me to manage I, I have someone to help me clip it <clears throat> mm -hmm. and i'm actually gonna start uploading them soon the hard part is just having to like i physically can't do everything anymore because yes. i have so much shit going on and that that's connected to my next question is consistency like um, in terms of consistency, do you just recommend as much as you can, as soon as you can, like just upload it or is there minimum when you're starting out once a week? Okay. Right. Um, bare, bare minimum two, like every two weeks. Yeah. But yeah, if you want to grow, uh, I would say at least two a week. Okay. You know? So, what... and I, I say for you, mm -hmm. cause I've hit the same sticking point as you of where it's like. This is physically just like the amount of time that I could do and yeah. say same. I upload like right? dude like once every two or three weeks. And it's like travel vlog, it's very generic and like I know it's it's good content if you're actually watching it, but I know it can be better. And to be honest, after talking to you, it almost makes me feel even more motivated to just completely shift because I wasn't I am passionate about it, but not enough to where I'm like want to do it forever. You know what I'm saying? And you yeah. said, like, I, I, if I didn't hit 100K yet, you, you can shift now. So yeah, I'm like, that's fine. I think I am, uh, dude. And as for the, as for the clip, uh, clips, like, um, I'm experiencing that where it's just like, I think my content is uh, pretty good. Yeah. But I just don't put it out fast enough. So then the next, the next I agree. step. I agree. The next step is scalability. Okay. Right? Like, how do you go to be more productive and free up time for you to just do the creative ends? So... That comes to, I used to edit for another big time YouTuber and that taught me so much. Oh, shit. Yeah. Um, I edited for MMG, who's a very popular uh, Madden YouTuber. And now he's just kind of like a vlogger and personality. So he being behind the scenes, like here's the other thing about like you young guys who are trying to get into YouTube. If there, if there's a YouTuber that you like that's hiring editors, be that, be that editor. Like, cause you learn so much about the ins and outs of that stuff. And maybe they're shitty you. Actually, MG was like incredibly nice. He's one of the nicest guys. Like he mm -hmm. he fronts like he's like this big talking like uh, like machismo type dude. Yeah. But behind the scenes, he's like a total sweetheart. Um, oh, that's so and he taught me like so much about like 
because he was fearless about transitioning. Uh, he was he he did Madden Mobile. That was like his original name was MMG was Madden Mobile God was his name. Super wow. cringy, but like he was yeah. like 16 and making like these shitty videos. And I was like, I don't know if this kid got talent, but I'll let it for money. Um, but he like grew, you wow. know, like he grew. And now it's like I see his personality is like has uh, is, he's riveting. He's captivating. to so just like watch now. And he went he was just like this kid playing a mobile game. And then he became a huge uh, FIFA, uh, no, a huge Madden guy. And now he's just like a big personality with like three multiple channels and being behind the scenes with him and like learning all the, all that stuff. And then being on a team with like other editors made me realize that like, cause he doesn't really edit his content really. Like he just makes the content and then he just like slaps it on. Yeah. He just like, and then he's free to like, go do other stuff. He still like lives his life. So that's wow. like kind of the dream, right? Yeah, is, the editing, if you can minimalize that, because that, yes. that does take so much fucking time. So much time. And I love fucking editing, right? But that's where me and you differ a little. <laughs> well, if you don't like the editing, then I, not I love be a the problem. recording. It's the yeah. editing that's kind of taking me back, like some of it. Mm -hmm. Then um, I've always loved editing, and it's like been a point of pride, and it's, it's been tough for me to like let that go. But everyone that I talked to was just like, you can get, you can find a guy and train him up to be like 80% of what you want it to be. And that allows you and what it's, uh, and this is recent for me. This has only been like the last month. It's allowed me to just focus on the creative side, to just focus on writing, mm. to be funnier um, and free up more time Damn. to produce more content quicker. So there's like, there's like levels. And I wouldn't have known this if I didn't edit for like a bigger YouTuber, I'd still be like trying to grind this out now problem with that is do you have enough money to respectfully pay your editor you know are you big time enough do you have other forms or assets or income that you can pay them a living wage like uh you could be a dickhole about it you know and there are a lot of like scummy guys out there that are paying kids like five dollars for a thumbnail and and charging people like 25 dollars for like eight hours worth of of labor but um you know, like that's what I'm trying to do right now. And like my model is, I, I guess I'm giving a little like the 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 secrets from the hunters. Yeah, yeah. Like I try to be as fair as possible because I've been in their position too. And yeah. I try to give people a percentage of the videos that they do. Okay. You know? Yeah. So it's just like that's but, my but model. I can't do that yet because I'm not making that numbers yeah. with you. But yeah. so at the beginning, I do have to start and do this by myself. Like Yeah, you gotta you like, hey everyone, don't listen to the podcast right now. You got to find someone who's like diehard about you and we'll do that shit for like on the low key, okay. you know, wow. like you need like a diehard fan that would be like, yeah, I watch all of your and uh, I think these these are the funniest clips. And then like you got to, you know, you got to have that kid. OK, like, I'm going to um, wait until I find that kid because like, yeah, once I switch, dude, I really like dude, I feel so fucking motivated to switch now. But like the only hard part is actually getting ready, like getting my next phase of videos like finding that concept that i want to be f writing for it and then everything like that just just do it i am like i am dude yeah you're you're uh right now you're in famine you're in famine mentality of like i don't want to lose what i have already yeah. but it's just it's like, not even much to lose <laughs> just like, yeah it's really it's really like you could start over right now and it, it'd be fine you okay. know like um just like because the hardest part in everything is is starting i, I want to ask this is the final little YouTube bit because I, I really was planning on talking about YouTube for like five minutes and then this became like an intellectual 101 class and it's no, been amazing. No, this is like what's fun to me. This is like what No, I love this, dude, because I learned so much from just this and I'm sure people who, are, well, anyone who's interested in YouTube listening to this will learn a lot. Um, so I, I'm battling this, it's like, it's like I'm hiring you to be a uh, consultant. <laughs> uh, so I'm battling this um, question I haven't started yet. I haven't uploaded my podcast clips. I have them already. Um, I mean, I, my editor is going to start like editing. I mean, uploading them for me. But I do want to ask you, do you recommend that I do what other YouTubers or other podcast YouTubers do and have my own clips channel or just upload it all on my main podcast? Um, I think right now, like, uh, right. Do you have your, your own YouTube channel that just has the podcast? So I have the podcast channel, the main channel, and I, I made a clips channel, but I don't know if I'm going to even use that yet. I think uh, I would hold off on that and I would just put it on the podcast channel. Okay. Let me now. text my editor right now. <laughs> Tell her to hold up. And then like, and then like try to, um, 
try to talk about things that are current events but aren't too saturated. Yeah, you know I what get I'm saying? that. Like Will Smith, that shit's over. You know, like, but if there are maybe like something more, more Asian based, a little bit more niche, right? Like, what's what's popping in in Asia right now? Like, if you want to talk about like the the Shanghai lockdowns or uh, I don't know what's happening in BTS or the the new season of anime. Actually, that's kind of saturated too. Like, if you could find stuff that isn't yeah. being serviced yet, but are current events and meaningful to someone else, that's what I would post on there. Or even if they aren't, like even the most current events, like some people are going to find you through that shit. And maybe one of those clips goes viral and then that'll bring people to the podcast. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think like the key to those are just like, why look at what Andrew Schultz does. Yeah. 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 I, I think I do a lot. Yeah. He's like the gold standard. And if you can do what he's doing for Asian content or some type of niche content, like all of his clips are like, they also don't give it away, right? What the clip is about. He's just like, a lot of YouTube is tricking and manipulating people into clicking on your shit, <laughs> which it's is like, sounds too. bad. It sounds bad, but it's the game. Yeah, yeah you're yeah, yeah. absolutely right. Like that, that's the game. And you need to like, look like you have, and then you have to deliver on the good. Like the, the clip has to be good. You have to have a unique take. And that's, that's kind of the struggle. But for now, like be focusing at least like trying to throw that spaghetti onto the wall and have a have an intriguing title or a question in that title and then have an intriguing thumbnail you know like you being shocked or all that shit like like this is all all the other stuff is like i used to work for companies and go to vidcon and go to all the like fucking backroom meetings where they discuss like oh these are the best practices and, and all that type of stuff so this is like shit that like Holy you know i'm being shit, a good man. asian student like about like the youtube and, and trying to grow on that shit but like, if i just had like good asian work ethic which i don't think i have like that genetic gene missed me i think i'd be like at a million but see i have that gene i just i'm learning i want the your gene that you have with the creativity and just also the cojones to just do it just do it because i i had enough cojones or balls to really just start and make content and now it's like fuck i want to switch and so you're you're giving me that i i think i'm i am and I'll, i'm definitely gonna f follow up on you and be like bro i did it whenever i did it <laughs> i mean like anybody who puts some stuff out there for 40 like podcasts like that's that's better than 90 percent of people like yeah as long as you just keep on showing up right and keep getting better every single time like you'll eventually find your audience i truly believe that and also like I have the cojones to do this because I'm unemployable in every other field. Like I've held so many fucking jobs and gotten fired from everything. And this is like the only thing that I can do for a living. So it's like, I, this is not good advice for everybody. Let me, <laughs> let me be absolutely clear. I get that. A lot of, that. a lot of y'all are meant to be an engineer. Like a lot of y'all are meant to be like Some lawyers for that. or a plumber. In fact, a lot of you, a lot more dudes out here, if you listen to this and you're like, life is shitty, become a plumber. We don't have enough plumbers in America. It's actually really good one. benefits. Yeah, amazing uh dollar per hour pay yeah my dad because nobody going. wants to do that shit anymore like we need more plumbers is yeah is, you take one thing away from this podcast be a plumber <laughs> okay so let's move on a little bit uh you're a big sports guy yeah. you're wearing a golden state uh beanie what a and a lot of your content pool yeah, yeah a lot of your content is uh soccer based so um i want to ask you what's your favorite teams across all sports Number one love from San Francisco, so San Francisco 49ers. Um, really? Not, You're yeah. a 49ers fan, okay. Yeah, so from San Francisco, yep. like my youngest like sports memory is watching like uh, like them win the Super Bowl back in like the 90s and shit. So it was like, um, I'm so you know, sorry for your guys' franchise nowadays. <laughs> Just like, it, I mean, like, it's always it's so been, close, but not close enough. Like, the older that you get, right, as a sports fan, and especially as like a barrier sports fan, you can't even be that mad. Like, the giant, like I've seen all of my major franchises win championships, and then like you know, like Detroit, <laughs> you know, like oh god, if I was born, yeah, if I was born in Detroit, like Cleveland got one or two now, but like they used to be the bane of 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 that existence. Like there are just like franchises that have been tortured. So big picture wise, like I'm not, I'm not even You're that not mad. Joking. I I'm just happy if the season is entertaining. Like, that's what I care about okay. most. And we had, like, a magical season last year. I'm sad about the Debo situation right now, but, but, like, I looked at the good years and I looked at the bad years. 
you know okay. so, it, so it makes you kind of appreciate it biggest you know? team you support uh, uh 49ers and then after yeah, that I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have guessed that and then what what's after that Manchester United is probably really a I'm a United team. fan yeah. as well I'm a United nice, fan as well nice yeah it's once again rough team <laughs> like rough. to, to like right now it's funny because uh, a lot of people, uh, especially your age, uh, I have a friend who is, I think, 29, 28. He's a Man U fan as well. And mm -hmm. um, you guys got to watch soccer or, like, watch Man U during their time where it was good. Like, yeah. there was that period where there was uh, the Rooney and Rooney, the Ronaldos. Even, yeah. And if you go for, far back enough, even the Beckham, like, era, you know? And yeah. so with me... <laughs> I started, I, I hopped on super late and like already, yeah. like was already tumbling. Like Ronaldo was gone. Like I hopped on when there was just Rooney mm -hmm. and then it was just, was Sir Alex fall. Ferguson still there? Yes, but barely like the okay, last few so, years. So you, so you had like one championship. Yeah, you yeah, saw one, one Premier League yeah, championship. Yeah, yeah. You had a Champions League final that they didn't win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But honestly, I'm. I'm not. I love watching EPL in general, just because of the com competitiveness. Um, I'm in terms of soccer, they're not the team that I watch the most, anyways. So, but uh, uh Man United. Who do you watch now? I I am the biggest. I if we're talking well, national uh, U.S. Of course, got a rep, mm -hmm. got a rep. Um, but then if we're talking club, I'm a big and it's the worst team to support right now. But Venezia, uh, Venice, because um, a friend of mine actually plays on the team. His uh oh. yeah Gianluca Busio his brother is uh went to high school with me and he is a, is a buddy of mine and I I played with Gianluca we don't know each other well well but like mm -hmm. no I know his brother like we're actually yeah. buddies and so because of that I'm like I gotta support this kid and he's on the U S national team as well uh but you know Vanessa we're in Syria they're actually facing relegation right now they're like the third like lowest team and it's in their end of schedule is like tough and I'm like murderous row yeah dude. Oh, no. And I, I don't know if you watch Italian soccer, but I will say behind EPL, obviously not skill level, but in terms of uh, how how not to like top heavy it is, it's similar to that because any team can take the title, any team can get relegated. It's like very c close in. No, I mean like last season. Wait, no, 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 no. two seasons ago, mm -hmm. when, whenever Lukaku was on Inter, that yes. was a, an amazing year in the Serie A, and like Zlatan was like killing it for like East oh, Milan. Yeah, and there was like three, there was like three to four teams. Like I think Napoli was also good, yep. and Juventus was good. That's kind of how it like, is right now. There's five. Teams. Yeah, I was, I was, I was talking about like back then. I was like, oh, like actually, Italy's like the most compelling league this year. Yeah, 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 like, yeah by yeah. far. Yeah, well, no, EPL's it's fun. Pretty crazy right now. With the fucking, there's a young, talented Arsenal. Who's like yeah. can just recently be a uh, fucking Chelsea, but then yeah. can't fucking beat like the <laughs> Scrum teams. And then there's like everybody yeah. else going on too. So wait, so yeah, you got. We're, we're probably gonna look back and see like these Liverpool and Manchester City teams are gonna be like this shit a legend. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. When we look back and like, so football is top for you. Yeah, NFL was like wow. the thing that I grew up on. Wow. Um, I got my first professional job through fantasy football. What? Um, yeah, I was in a writing class for in LA, and then I saw that this like lady next to me was like checking out her fantasy team, and I was like, "Oh, you play fantasy?" I was like, "Oh, you should move that to that, right?" And you should uh, drop him for her. And then like uh, like through that year, I helped her win her league, right? Okay. And then what I didn't know at the time Whoa. was that she was the musical manager for Questlove. Do you know who Questlove is? Yeah, I know who Questlove is. Yeah, what the fuck? That's yeah, crazy. I a, yeah, I have a weird story. Huge fan of so, me. like, she was the, the manager for uh, Questlove, and she played in a league with, like, a bunch of celebrities. Like, she played with, like, John Legend and, like, uh, Flea from Red Hot Chili Peppers. And, yeah, uh, Sorensen, he was a guy from, like, the, the quarterback from, like, Friday Night Lights. So, like, she was tapping. This was, like, my L.A. days. And uh, they had to kick John Legend out of the league because <laughs> <What>? <laughs> it was like, yeah, they had to kick John Legend out of the league because he like he sucked. He like never oh. set his lineup. Really, <laughs> she was like really nice guy, but he like fucking trash at like fantasy football. Apparently, you got time for that. It's whatever. He gets to have sex with with uh, Chrissy Teigen, so yeah. I'm, I'm pretty happy. Um, well, but mm. yeah, so like yeah, I helped her win a league, and then like uh, she brought me on as like an intern to like help out. Yeah in like the music industry so that was like my first job was through like fantasy football so it's like i've loved fantasy defending champion of my home league this year thank you jamar chase wow thank, okay. thank you uh 
yeah uh justin jefferson who's my keeper in my keeper league like pulled me through this year yeah, thank you bro. very much yeah so then you got um, the job through her yeah yeah i mean she was the manager and then she just hired me. she hired me as an intern but really i was just giving her fantasy tips and like ever since that then she's just like uh hilarious <laughs> yeah it's you know, like this is what i like uh, all the jobs that I've gotten in my life have just been like back ass words and like none of the conventional wisdom. Like I remember like growing up, my dad was like, Nathan, you're likable, but you're never going to get it. There's no job out there for being likable. And then YouTube happened. Like, you yeah, know, like yeah, 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 just weird shit happens. Don't listen to anybody else. Like the future is always changing. Like that's who true. the fuck knows. That's just big fact, stay dude. disciplined and work hard. And like, uh, like, uh, like follow what you're good at, you know, and stay consistent and like, don't really listen to other people because like most people don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Like yeah. pure and simple. Yeah. You know? Um, I want to, I want to ask you, cause I feel like watching your videos, I kind of got a, um, a feel for your interest. And I feel like we actually have some similar interests. Favorite TV show. Is it game of Thrones? It used to be same, but, like, let's but then that last season, bro, they fucking botched it. Yeah, yeah. What's your what's your favorite TV? Sh what are your top three TV favorite TV shows like that are like running right now? Running right now? Yeah. Oh, Not well, finished. It well, technically it just ended, but the mm -hmm. Last Kingdom's got to be in the top three. I love that. I just show. started that. Just started that. And I'm gonna be honest, did not hook me in the first like three episodes. No. I'm like, this guy got no, a weird no. accent. It's I don't slow. know. It's slow. Yeah, yeah, Sorry. yeah. Production gotta, production value is a little bit like you gotta commit an epic battle and it's like ten dudes. You, you know, like <laughs> you got to commit, bro. Because once once the, uh, Netflix picked up the show, mm -hmm. because they picked it up, I think in the third or second season, there's a huge shift. It's it's also like first season is pretty good. Like it's fine. It's good enough to go through. And then the yeah. second season, you're like, oh shit, they got some hot ass girls. They got some mm -hmm. fucking like badass characters. Uhtred becomes like way cooler. Uh, the main guy so that, mm -hmm. that's probably one of my top three um god ted lasso i fucking yeah. love that show yeah. you you referenced that a lot that's actually why it grabbed me i saw ted lasso on your thumbnail i was like all right let's like what's up uh on some of your thumbnails yeah and then um god running right now that's a hard one bro i don't i don't know what shows i'm watching right now what about you throw me some i'm gonna think uh, while you're Actually, like Ted Lasso isn't one of my favorite shows. Yeah, yeah. I love. I just love. Yeah, it. I, I I like it. Uh, I think it's it's a fantastic show, and I think it's exactly like the medicine that like people need right yep. now. Like, yeah, we just needed a feel good show. Yeah, you know, that's why like, I like it. it's been I a like rough it. couple years. Yeah, like we just needed a, a feel good show. Um, currently running like mostly watching like anime and shit. Like Ranking of Kings was fantastic. Ah. If you haven't, See, nobody's the, like caught Ranking of Kings. The thing uh, about incredible. anime that that I don't know what the fuck happened to me, but like when I turned, I think it was like two or three years ago, I fell off all animes like completely, mm -hmm. and it's it, mm -hmm. it's almost like hard to get back into it. It's like playing a sport again that you yeah. after getting injured. It's like <sighs> I gotta no, find the I, right one. I'm exactly I'm exactly there with you. After college, like I completely fell Same. off of anime. Same. Yeah. Um, but then like my friend my friend kept on like badgering me about this one series. So gateway drug. You you get back in and then it's just like, oh yeah, it's like so fucking refreshing to mm -hmm. go into like a culture that is just different from yours, you know, that has a different perspective. When you drop two nuclear bombs on a people, they they <laughs> come out with big titty anime bitches and like fucking like yeah. parasites coming out of your nuts and shit. You know, like it's and like so it's much different. of American media is very uh homogenized, you know, it's you know, pasteurized. Yeah, you know, watered everything's down like and, yeah, yeah, watered down, everything has to be safe, like no one can be offended anymore. And then anime, they just go for it. So, like, they, yeah, don't, they, they do don't give a shit. shit. Speaking of anime, what's your favorites of all time? Let's talk. Uh, Let's talk anime, Easily bro. number one, Neon Genesis Evangelion. Like, Damn it, I haven't seen that one. What? I was oh, really I expecting us to see some, some similar ones. It's it's tough, right? Because that shit wasn't available in America until Netflix oh, bought it. Oh, wait, it's on Netflix so, still? Yeah, 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 yeah. What's it called? Fully on Netflix. Uh, all the movies are, all the older movies are there. And then all the newer movies are on Amazon. What's it called? So, Neon Genesis Evangelion. I think it's the greatest anime okay, of I all time. It. You have to be in a certain mood. It's, it's oh, this slow. is a classic. Yeah, nineteen ninety-five. 
Yeah, 1995. Um, it's like is it like Gundam? Uber, Uber. Kinda. It is a mech show, but yeah, that's why it's I was... more. It's like depression. The anime is the way that I pitch it, which oh. is not a very good way to pitch it. <laughs> but it's like a psychosomatic, like uh, hypersexual adolescence fuck fest of the mind. But it works. Okay. Right. And like the amazing story behind it is that um, it was originally supposed to just be a mech show. It, it, it was supposed to be like just Gundam, right? Gundam was lit but though. The, but this, uh, but the director who was like this kind of like prodigy that kind of, uh, he was like an understudy of Hiao, uh, Hiao Miyazaki, the Ghibli oh, guy. Yes. Give me a, sh- yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he was like an understudy on Ghibli. And he was amazing just known movies. for like amazing uh, key key animation, which is just like whenever you see like uh, an anime and there's like a super sick like animation, that's like keys essentially. Wow. So he he just he was just a creative genius when it came to that type of shit. And so like he got hired to make this basically like Gundam show that, to sell toys, but very famously he was extremely depressed during the making of Evangelion. Wow. And so... essentially that just like bled into the show. And it just became kind of like a psychoanalytic of his psyche and like what it means to be alone, what it means to like, oh. you know, like what does it mean to to make human connection like uh, and like what does it mean to be depressed and to like fight through all that shit. And as like a depressed, I found it when I was like 13 and just like <laughs> depressed, angsty, like teenager. And I was like, yes, this speaks to me. <laughs> like, so you know, like that type of shit. at that time. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. I think when I was 13, thinking back at, like, in terms of anime that kind of made me feel that way, I mean, I grew up on the, on the era of, let's say, like, Inuyasha, Naruto, the original. Uh, oh, uh, what was, oh, my God, what was that fucking, well, obviously Dragon Ball Z, but, um, fuck, what's that with the spirit what gun? What was the plot? The spirit gun. Spirit gun? Yu Yu Hakusho. Yu Yu Hakusho. I grew up on that shit, yeah. bro. That's, yeah. that's. That's interesting. And I grew up on Gundam too and all the class. Wow. Okay. So that, that one's a little bit older than even my, when I started uh, anime. So I'm going to have to look into that one. Yeah. Like obviously like I grew up during the age of like Naruto and Dragon Ball as well. But like that was the first anime that, that made me realize like, oh, this could be like adult. You yeah. Know, it's yeah, not yeah, just yeah. like. So what else did you like? Like my, my power is greater than your power. Um, <laughs> Like I'm kind of an old, I feel like I'm like an old grumpy like you know how they're like old heads in hip hop. Yeah, I feel like that way head. about about anime. You know, you're it's like, like my favorites are like Evangelion. I like like Cowboy Bebop. Oh yeah, and I I like, Cowboy Bebop. I, yeah, and then I turn my nose up on like all these new series, like fucking like uh, Demon Slayer. I was like, yeah, Demon Slayer's all right. You know, like uh, I heard the movie was pretty good. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen I it yet. It I've been, I'm trying to find a girl on Hinge that's like a weeb girl that's that'll hey, go with is, me. Hinge is the way, bro. Because at your age and like, slash, even my age, like that's where like girls actually want to hang out and like do stuff versus like Tinder and Bumble, where it's just kind of like a fuck fest of yeah, like random yeah. people. Yeah, it's, it's and youngins. Uh, yeah, it's Russian roulette on. What's on your those What's apps. your cutoff age in terms of minimum age? How low is too low? Hello, this is Chris Hansen, and uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, to- no, no, I think like, like twenty three is okay, like that's fair, that's because fair. like twenty twenty three is is uh, I read somewhere that like you your mean? brain is fully developed at around like twenty three, twenty four, and every time I've I've dated like girls who are who are younger than that, like just crazy shit tends to happen. I'm like, obviously, like people mature at like different rates, but yeah. like. 23 24 that's is safe. like that's very they're, they're a couple years out of college they got like all the partying most of the partying out like you yeah. could you could like anime and chill and still <laughs> like go to the club and that kind of stuff every once in a while but it's not like it's not chaos like pure like chaotic youthful energy what's you know uh, what I'm saying? what's the biggest speaking of clubs and all that stuff what's the biggest difference between new, uh, new york city why'd you pick new york city and moving from cali um so I was in a long-term relationship with uh, my girlfriend at the time and uh, we're still good friends now, but like our dream was like, Hey, we're going to start a family. And she like, we helped each other kind of like achieve our dreams. Like okay. I didn't always have the faith that I would make it on YouTube, but she was like, Hey, your content's good. Like, I still believe in you. I think you can make it. Don't give up. Right. And there were a lot of times where I wanted to give up and I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to get like a normal job and that kind of shit. Um, 
but she kept me going. And so I made it that way. And then her dream was to like, kind of like make it out of the hood and become like corporate. And uh, she got, she did it. She, she went to USC. And then after that, she got into Cornell for like the most prestigious HR program in, in the United States, you know? So it's like, that was like her dream. Um, And then we went to Cornell and it it did not work out. (laughs) Like it was like weird. (laughs) Like we started living together in Ithaca and like, we did not mesh well there and it, happens, it was like bro. hey together yeah it, people change and you know no hard feelings we're still best friends now um but during that time we had visited new york for two weeks and i completely fell in love so it was like do i just like move back to california where i've been my whole entire life or do i try something new and with youtube being my career you know digital nomad shit you right. can live anywhere and i just love the energy of the city i love the they the just pure chaotic energy of new york city was like yes keeps this is my element keeps you creative yeah yeah, yeah. It keeps you on your toes it, it, it keeps you motivated and um you know it's that whole going back to game of thrones like chaos is a ladder like yeah i just yeah. like and i've always been a city guy so it's just like why not try the greatest city in the world right I now love and new then, york city yeah it's Have like you, did you visit a lot before you moved there no oh i wow. visited once and then i moved there and oh I didn't even gosh. see the apartment that I saw. Like, it's just like. So when, uh, how long ago? This is really recent, right? Yeah, a little bit over like two, two years ago. I was in Brooklyn for two years and I just moved to Manhattan this past month. Wow. That's fucking a big difference, dude. Um, Oh, man, I was going to point on something, but I forgot. But if you, hey, I've been in New York City many, many, many times. My girlfriend's from uh, Westchester, which is just above New York City, um, Manhattan. And um, yeah, if you need some food wrecks, I got you. I got you on lock. Yeah, give it to give it. I was I was doing well. I was doing a whole. Asians always have food wrecks, dog. Because that's all yeah. we care about, son. And it um, really is. Also, can we talk about like everybody? Like nobody has remembered this, but like everybody used to give about ten years ago. Everybody used to give shit to Asians about taking pictures of their food. Remember when they used to <laughs> yes, shame us on that shit? Dude. We we bro, we took pictures of everything though. <laughs> like, yeah, we'll be traveling like yo, take take picture. Yeah. <laughs> But it like specifically, I remember like the white people like Ugh. like you would hear like audible like Ugh, when when yeah. you would take the picture of it and then they would like talk about it and now everybody does and that. And now shit. white girls are like oh oh uh, boomerang, cheers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, shout outs to white girls. Yeah. Like us as Asians, we don't give white girls enough credit. Without them, there wouldn't be as many boba shops. Let's be honest. Fuck like no. white yeah. girls, white, white girls, girls open the door kids. for boba shops. Sushi and pokey would not be as big. Yeah, you know, yeah, without white BTS. girls, so BTS and BTS, you know, but like, uh, but I and then BTS is kind of like multicultural. Yeah, like you, yeah, you yeah, see yeah, the yeah. you, that's true. you that's see true. the you see the the BTS concerts and there's like girls of of every color. That's true. Like going to that Thank thing, God. but yeah, shout out to white girls. Like, shout listen, out to it's white been girls. a rough couple of years for y'all. <laughs> you deleted uh uh like we have deleted the name Karen. From ever being like a, like a, a white girl's name. name, yeah, 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 a viable name for the next decade. I feel for oh, all, so I funny. feel for all the girls that are named like Karen, but you know, would you ever, um, would you ever do stand up? I'm, I'm actually uh, gonna start dabbling in that very soon. I was, I was curious because you're pretty funny too. Well, you're really funny. Uh, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, I, um, I've always been like told that ever since like college. I always did like uh, comedy. I've done improv i fucking suck at improv actually dude i've always um, wanted to try that because uh i was i was on tv uh last year on fox and because of that i was like kind of hooked at like the idea of like oh i can see myself on tv <laughs> yeah i saw that you were you were on the the one of the singing shows right? yeah i was on a, i can see your voice as, as a game show on fox and i got to meet ken mm-hmm. jong also and he grew up in my uh town so it was really cool um, oh experience. let's go yeah, yeah, yeah and that he, he's like an, you know he's one of the asian Top tier. Yeah, got it. Nice. Got his start in stand up. One of my favorite Asian jokes ever was the uh, Ken Jeong, uh, Asian, Asian, there are no Asian vets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Great joke. Dude, uh, great Asian joke. comedians are underrated. I love Bobby Lee. I love, uh, some, some, all the greats. I, I even, I was, yeah, Ronnie sleeper. Chang, Ronnie obviously, Chang. like, probably the top Jimmy Asian stand up right now is Ali Wong. Oh, yeah. Ali Wong's fucking uh, yeah. she's she's great for tapping into, I think, like uh, a mass group like anyone can listen to her. 
and yeah. laugh at it. Where uh, it's not yeah. so so niche as like if you watch Jimmy O Yang, you're gonna laugh if you're fucking Asian. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah Jimmy yeah. O Yang's like very niche. Specific. Same thing with Ronnie Chang. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, and that's what I fear for the content that I wrote. I try to write it uh, for everyone, but there are Asian jokes that are just natural. No, you gotta write it. You gotta you gotta approach that shit like because that's the shit that makes you different. Yeah, you know. Yeah, like. You can't be scared that people don't want to hear your experience. Oh, for sure, because for sure. At the, you have to have faith that um that people will take your experience and relate it to something in their life. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, be, they live the white life. They don't want to hear about that shit. That's why hip hop music is so popular. Is because it's just like <laughs> I want to live vicariously in a dangerous life because my life is so sterile and boring. Right, right, you know, right. like, and they they want to see like what was your struggle? What was like that? Like so, like a dream of mine, like my. My like magnum opus, if I want to make it, is like a clueless guy to growing up Asian American guy, male. Oh, dude, you know what's fucking crazy? Uh, I I'm, I want to write a book on that. Yeah, I, ha- I have a book idea called uh, um, "In the Slanted Eyes of a First Gen." Mm-hmm. And uh, I I haven't actually like fully wrote it, but I have concepts down. And it, I I mean I feel like that's something that I can't write right now, anyways, because I'm not. Till that l- you're not old. Yeah, you're not old enough. Yeah, you're, no. you, need, you need 10 <laughs> more years. I'm your age, okay? Yeah, yeah, 10, 10 <laughs> yeah, more years. Dude, if I ever do stand-up and, like, uh, not make it, but, like, enough to just travel around and I do it in New York, you should open. We should do it, like, <laughs> that'd be fucking hilarious. I've, um, you got like, t- like, part of the reason why I moved to Manhattan is to be closer to the stand-up scene. Yeah. Um, I lived, uh close to the comedy store when i was in la oh so i had a lucky. skit i had a skit performed at the comedy store i accidentally went into the, like the belly room one time <gasps> and like they didn't know they thought i was part of the crew but i just like because sh- my friend said hey we're gonna get you tickets and you can get in for free and like i went up to the ticket register is like oh go around the back and so i just like there was no one there so i just walked into the room what and I didn't know. Fuck? And then, like, the guy was like, the guy, the head of tech was like, all right, everyone gather around in a meeting. And I didn't know what to do. So I just, like, walked up with everyone else. And I just kind of, like, nodded my head. Ah, and nobody like, noticed is? that. Like, they just assumed that I was part of the crew. You look like you could be. Yeah. It was like, a- this is Asian privilege, right? It's like, you basically walk into anything. You and people will just assume anywhere. that you belong. You're exactly. Like, ah, yeah. Yeah. You could, you could work that here. one Asian guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could work here. So, like, that's what I did. I just, like, smiled and nodded. And then, like, when it ended, I just, like, quietly slipped out of the room and just, like, went through the front door. And the that's dude. fucking hilarious, dude. But uh, but part of why I wanted to move to New York and, and be close to Manhattan is, like, to go to the Comedy Cellar to go. That's uh, a great one. To go watch. Maybe not perform stand-up because. Okay. You're not the type? You have not known true fear and true non-funniness yeah. until you've gone to an open mic yeah, yeah especially and i've been to a number of open mics in la and seen people bomb. and it's just like yeah not just bomb like pure cricket silence right and it's just like and every great stand-up says that you need to do that for five years you just need to be a psychopath and just bomb for five years because everybody thinks that they're funny and yeah, everybody yeah, thinks course. that of like course. they could do stand-up because you can make people laugh like mm-hmm. mono and mono it's a different game when it comes to stand-up you need to count the syllables mm. of what you do you need to have the exact right punchline and have the exact right timing. timing yeah yeah and you need to have it's like so much of rhythm and you actually the audience can sense so much your delivery how you tweak it it's there's so much craftsmanship in stand up that people don't understand because the greats like Chappelle and Schultz and Tim oh. Dillon, they make it look like it's easy. It's effortless. Yeah. They, they make it look like they're just doing rapport. But there's so many small things that they do. You don't understand that they've done, they've run that set. They go from set to set in New York just doing so that the same, they can. Yeah, exact same, maybe yep. tweak like one or small t- one or two like small things. And then they'll mix in like crowd work. Like they'll talk with people so it looks like a little bit more organic, right? And then they'll Dude. they'll heckle back at the heckler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the weird thing, I don't I don't know if it's it's the problem with me, but like when you say bombing and you say crickets, I a lot of I, I, I actually want that experience. It's really weird. Mm-hmm. Like I, I want 
I, I, I thrive on it. And it's, it's weird that I say this because we talked about how I was scared to do the shift. Right. Cause that is something I am actually fearful of, but in terms of embarrassment of like public, I'm not really, I, I don't really, I kind of get off to that. Like it, it it's fun mm-hmm. to me. Cause I'm like, damn, yeah. I really just fucking fucked the shit, shit the bag there. <laughs> and yeah. I think it's hilarious. So I really want to start. And the only thing that's holding me back right now is just to finish my, uh, my like, um, not my set, full set, but like just kind of closing because I don't have a closing thing. And I'm just kind of trying to figure you it out. You don't have a closer? You don't no, have that I closing don't. joke? And, and the the one thing I want, I would love to do is, you know, uh, and this, obviously this is not something a beginner should be doing anyways, but I really want to learn how to do the storytelling of, of all your, have all your jokes, but connect something from the beginning to the end. Like, I oh, love that. Yeah. I always love that. I mean, that. that's. I mean, uh, it's called the callback. Yeah, the callback. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's um, there are also like different types of standups. There yeah. are people who are excellent storytellers, and that's like yes. that's all they do. Like Burt Kreischer, yep, is not good at takes. The He's, machine. He said, yeah, he said that like so. Some people like Schultz, they're great at like current topic. I'll give you a take on it. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna give you an offensive take, and I'm gonna make it funny, right and uh, and absurd. Burt Kreischer can't do that shit. And he knows that's not his strength, but what he mm. does, you know, the machine, as you said, like yeah. he just tells incredible stories that make people laugh. I, I got to find um, out what I'm good at. Yeah. And if you don't have that shame, like, yeah, go up and bomb, just have a, a tight five minutes, like, and then take notes, take voracious notes on like, what got the laugh here? Like, yeah, I'm going to get the laugh. I'm going to get someone you to know? record me when I go, like, I'm going to have a best friend in the back just because the places that we're going to, they're not official enough to where you can't record. Like it's bars and stuff. If yeah. if you're in the, my area, like in Greensboro, North Carolina, so I'm gonna have a, a friend of mine come with me and just record, just so I can kind of. And that that's the, and again, this becomes how it's when you're getting to know me more. Uh, I have that problem of I don't want to like go balls to wall on any subjects. I love doing it all, like YouTube, podcasting, fucking. I want to do the stand up thing now, and I'm also managing the businesses. Like I just love doing everything. It's kind of. Which is mm-hmm. which could be a uh, downside when you're not like boom on one thing. Yeah, I would say like while while that is it's it's insanely fun to do yeah. all that stuff. Eventually, I yeah. think you have to pick, pick one one thing to to focus on because it's the hard part. All those things like they're different. They seem like they're interconnected, they're but some of them they're have not. just like different skill sets. Yeah. And you know, it's like court rust or or ring rust. If you if you aren't doing stand-up all the time you're gonna get shitty at it if you're not doing podcasts all the time you're you're not gonna have that that rhythm that quickness on it yeah same thing with videos you're not gonna have that eye you're not gonna be like oh this is where the joke or the meme or that shit is gonna go in because you haven't your brain is maybe some people have that ability to do all those things one percent but yeah but like unless you have that limitless pill like <laughs> it's it's very tough to do you see very funny people try to do stand-up and fail yeah, yeah, you know, that's true, like that's it's true. uh it's a different, it's a different skill set. It's a different talent set because you. I'll see if I like gotta, it. Yeah. yeah, and I would say like, if you are, are you good in front of crowds? Like, have you done like yeah. speeches and that kind yeah. of stuff? I mean, I don't, like, I don't like choke up or anything. Mm. Yeah, I say yeah. uh a lot every now and then, but like it's not like I'm not flawless in terms of that. But I do, I thrive on the adrenaline of like there's a bunch of people. Like I'm an attention whore. I'm an attention. Mm. That's what I am. I'm like Riley Reed with a with a gangbang like around me, you know? Yeah. If anybody, I mean like if anybody who makes like a, a YouTube channel is narcissistic. Oh, right. hundred percent. <laughs> yeah. Like we all think that we're like God's gift to, to earth. And like <laughs> like nobody makes a YouTube channel is, is humble. Yeah, right? right. Like so yeah, you yeah. you kind of gotta embrace that like a little bit of like narcissism and oh and for sure. That. Yeah. Um, but without, you know. Now going like full Jake Paul for lack of a better example. Hey, but you hey, know, like, that motherfucker is successful as fuck. I'll give him that. Though. Yeah, and I mean he's like, entertaining. Where, I'll give him that. He's. I mean, he. I, I've grown actually like the kid. Like I same. think he works it's hard. Same with uh, Logan too. Yeah, I actually think if they would just tone it, like I think Jake is a good guy. If he would just like tone down, like he wants to be this heel, and everybody wants him to be this heel, but like deep down, I think he's just like a nice kid. Yeah, he's I think like he's a, nice a normal kid. kid. Who's like a little bit of like an attention whore white guy. Exactly. You know, which is like there's no crime in that. He also grew like, up in a in Ohio. a setting. Well, yeah, but also grew up in the setting and when he came to Hollywood where it was like you have to be the biggest douchebag possible to throw cuz that was during the era of like 
top tier YouTube yeah, douchebag. Douche like, yeah, douche yeah, was... We're talking yeah. rice gum, like fucking uh, Jake Paul, uh, all the. Who's that Leafy? Yeah. Yeah, Leaf. Oh, fuck Leafy. <laughs> And it was funny because I feel like the kids were so into it, but I think our my age to your age was kind of like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, but if we were if we were thirteen, we'd love him. Right? Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, because that was that was the shit back then. And uh, yeah, yeah, dude, that's dude. It's it's nice sharing um like shit or breaking bread with someone that it's kind of on the same wavelength. Uh, I was gonna ask you, I had a, I had something just pop up in my head. When you were talking um, about comedy, oh yeah, um, when you when you were to rank like if you were to rank your top comedians, what would you say are your top tier? Uh, easily Dave Chappelle number one. Oh, same. Um, Asians yeah, love so, Chappelle, dude. Yeah, I mean, I've I've loved like I've always thought Chappelle was better than Seinfeld, like for the oh, longest 100. time. Like hundred, dude, the Chappelle show was my shit. Yeah, I could never get into Seinfeld. I get that Seinfeld, like, it's all right. every every top, like, and here's the thing, it's just, like, I was, I don't know if you had this experience, but growing up, like, uh, uh, Asian, you aren't raised by your parents. I was raised by television. Yep. And, like, well, my favorite American channel, side of it, yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, you were yeah, fed yeah. by your parents, but your parents are so busy. You yeah, just... yeah, they were working until, like, night, so I don't yep. see them until, like, 10. So, Same. like, it's basically, like, my grandma, who I could barely speak with, because yep. she was, she spoke some weird dialect. And then mm. it was just TV. So what I would watch was like Comedy Central. And the majority of stuff that was on there was just like stand-ups. So I feel like that's like kind of where oh, like wow. I got a lot of like my humor was like I ever love since that. I was a little kid, like I watched like stand-up. And so like I developed like timing and rhythm, which has helped me like those skills. Like another thing is just like you develop a lot of skills along the way that you don't know are going to help you out later on, you yeah. know, like um. And it was just like, oh, yeah, like I picked up on that, like when I was young. So that's how I developed like timing because, you know, like that's so much like rhythm is so much in comedy and like knowing the exact word. And then I did uh, uh, comedy television writing. So I know like a little bit. That's why I feel like I have a little bit of a leg up on on some YouTubers. But some people are just naturally motherfucking funny, like the yeah. FMG. FNG is like naturally like I met him when um, I went over to the UK. That motherfucker is just like naturally funny yeah nat naturally like good looking like we went to the club and the, you like walk into the club and every girl like instantly you could feel the room like what they want to fuck this guy like i saw him walk past a girl in a club in london and the girl like turned around i watched her face and she like licked her lips right and i was like <laughs> and i went over to him and i was like what the fuck is it like being you? Like, yeah, like, what is it like? Wait, let me pull up this now, guy. I want to see this guy. FMG? Yeah, like, yeah, he, me and him started at around the same time, right? Like, we did the same content. We were just doing, like, FIFA career mode content. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, I'm pretty good. I'm funnier than all these motherfuckers. And then I watched this kid. I was like, fuck. <laughs> like, FMG. I was like, fuck, this guy. You know, it's like, you, you think you, like... Like, I, I felt like, oh, I could play in the league, but then you, like, run up against LeBron. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's how I felt when I, like, I was like, ah, I could play in the league, but this motherfucker, like, is the the messy. He's just, like, effortlessly, like, uh, funny and talented. I cannot see okay, the I see this kid. that guy. Yeah. Oh, he looks good. And now yeah. he's, like, yeah, he's on Sideman. He's on, like, BBC or, and, like, Sky Sports. He was on Sideman? Yeah, he was he was just on like this. Uh, he was just on this thing with uh, Simon Yo, of like Sidemen. And honestly, him. I think he's he's probably funnier than most of the people on Sidemen. Like good generally for him, dude. That's awesome. Yeah, he does look good. Yeah. Wow. No, generally, cool, like just a cool, like really really talented guy. I've been blessed to like go up with like a class, and that's like the other thing about like doing stand up is like, I think I want to watch stand up, but I don't know if I want to go, go into, into it stand up. It becomes different. And it's just like people did stand up before they knew about YouTube and TikTok and Instagram. Like I can reach a lot more people with my comedy I over see. YouTube than I can just in the cellar. Yeah. But at the same time, I think I'm funnier. Like I think I the funniest I ever was was when I was doing YouTube and I was working at an escape room as a host. You worked at an escape room? I worked, I worked a lot oh, of jobs. I told you, yeah, I'm unemployable. <laughs> yeah, I That's worked. so sick. I've always Brand. wanted to see how it was to work those because you get to try them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like, you learn, I learned so much about people working in an escape room because like, what I realized is that people will believe that their own shit if you just 
pump them up a little bit. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. like the whole point of escape room is like you're trying to test like people's intelligence yep. and you could see that a lot of people are fucking dumb and you got to oh, yeah. like i had the walkie talkie and you're just like coaching people yeah, through, yeah, 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 yeah. right and it's just like i had a coach like this one guy through the entire <laughs> thing right and at the end i'm like oh yeah you did that well and you figured out that one and like, like oh, you yeah. could see him and when i was when i told him this even though he figured out nothing i could see his chest like puff up and his like eyes glow it's like yeah i did do that didn't i I was like yeah i'm smart yeah i was like no you dumb you're dumb as fuck you're dumb as bricks and it's just like you also see that like people love to take credit for other people's work like i i remember there was like this family and this little girl who said nothing the whole entire time she figured out all the puzzles right but the dad the dad was like i figured out everything like at the end he was like i did that i've I've been with one of those people yeah yeah, yeah. yeah yeah you're like i knew that um and it was like in hollywood so like there were sometimes celebrities that would come by like leonardo DiCaprio came by one time yeah he showed up late <laughs> it was like halfway through he comes in uh he goes into the room figured out nothing figured out nothing um but like we had to coach him like through everything but uh couldn't even get out of the easiest room <laughs> like wow the, the kids room essentially that like that like uh, 15 year olds can get out in like half an hour. Like they couldn't figure it out, but um, loved it actually like really nice guy. Yeah. yeah. And all those types of things, but you just like, um, some people are just I say that. I'm sorry. I got sidetracked. Talented. Like, yeah, but you know? I, I get sidetracked because like um, the weird thing about YouTube and doing digital content is you don't hear the laugh, right? Mm-hmm. You don't hear the response of people. So yeah. it's like your mode of funny or your thinking of funny is like what you find funny on the internet. But it's different when you're in person. You, you, you get live feedback. I don't, I don't know if this makes sense. Yeah. No, you, it, it like, does make sense. And it also impacts the way that you're going to deliver the next joke because you're able on YouTube to just keep going and not yeah. have it that like, oh, shit, like I didn't do good. And then the anxiety of – but it's but also at the flip side of it, the bad thing is for a narcissist like me – or not really, but like you know what I'm saying. Um, if I do get a laugh – I'm now motivated to go where we're in YouTube. You're kind of like, all right, let's just fuck. Let's just get, we got to keep going. You also know what you, you don't know where the laugh is. Yeah. Right. On YouTube. Yeah. It's just like a lot of people will post like funny video or ha 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 or the, the, the laughing emoji, but they won't say the exact point that was like hilarious. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you don't kind of don't, you think, you know, like what's funny, but you <laughs> don't. And until you like put that shit out and you actually like, deliver a line to a, 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 a like a live in IRL person like you yeah. don't know how that is and I felt like because I was interacting with people and that's kind of why I like New York now is that like I get to talk to people on like a daily basis and try to make them laugh in person and I feel like that translates to um like the content and my writing when it comes to YouTube dude I you know and closing out everything, um, the one thing that I really, really learned from this conversation, beyond just knowing you as a person and you know becoming buddies, uh, is well, one, I'm gonna switch my shit up, and I think I, I have these two uh, video, maybe three that I have obligated, like I've obligated with restaurants because what I do for my main channel is um, like restaurants hire me and pay mm-hmm. me to do content for them in the, yeah. these videos. So after I'm done with those two, I think I'm just going to take a break from doing all vlogs and just start writing for whatever I am going to transition to. And I have an idea. Um, it's kind of taking a little bit from you and Maxwell too, uh, of like, you, you know how you guys do this? Uh, you, you guys use the B rolls, you guys use that. Um, and then you commentate over it. You make jokes and stuff like that. I'm thinking maybe I can do that with travel and like, um, not kind of not like a dummies guide, but like a, a your guide into Italy, but make jokes about it or your guide into places that I've been. Talk about the restaurants, talk about the things that you can do, uh, but talk about like the racism you're going to face if you're Asian or something like that. Like, I don't know. I'm thinking about it all right now. And I'm just something, just something. Yeah. No, I mean, like, like uh, humor is is such a good. What is like a. Uh... It's like such a good base to deliver information with, yeah. you know, it's just like, it is the tortilla of the taco meat that you're going to give to people. Right. You know, and people just like, it's also like, you can get away with so much more with like humor and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So anything that can make it unique 
I think people are just starved for unique, fresh voices, un- different takes, um, people taking risks, you know, with the humor. Like I've gotten, I've gotten backlash on uh, a lot of the jokes that, that I've made in the past, but that's like, that's part of the fun is like, you're going to swing and you're going to miss. Yep. And I think if you can provide, like, I think you're already going into that blue ocean strategy of like, oh, okay. Like, uh, I'm going to do it, but with my own personal twist, I think yeah. it's the way to go. And yeah, I mean, honestly, like, uh, you're doing the dream that I wish I like, that is the dream is just do like travel and eat food. Right. See, it's like, I, it's going to be Bourdain. It's, right. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. But the issue is it's so hard to grow because it is saturated. You're correct. Um, a lot of my trips, uh, with the exception of Europe, a lot of my trips are paid for because these restaurants are paying me. So like, yeah. um, you know, I charge like, I would say anywhere from when I first started fifty dollars to now like a hundred to one hundred fifty per restaurant that I feature, and mm-hmm. um, like the most I can make on a trip if it's four days uh, and I'm doing really like grinding like in Raleigh, North Carolina, I made like two grand off of that, and so like that supplements me traveling. But the downside is the editing time is a bitch, and then on top of mm-hmm. editing, you're not getting you're getting numbers that are satisfactory for these restaurants because they're you got to think Raleigh, North Carolina, that's not a big target. You're not like in California, like LA. In LA, yeah. you would they would expect like hundred thousand views minimum. Yeah, LA, New York, yeah. So these videos, I'm getting five thousand, ten thousand, maybe if I'm lucky, fifteen, twenty thousand views. But like, mm-hmm. and then I'm I look at you guys, like you, Maxwell, everyone else, uh, even uh, Filippo, tactical manager. I'm like, you guys are niche. You guys uh, get to do something that you, it seems like you guys are enjoying, and it's more, almost like. It seems like it's so not easy, but like you guys are able to just do it so fluidly that I'm like, Damn. there's less overhead. Yeah, dude. A yeah, lot less overhead. Like what's your editing overhead. time on a video? Like um like pure editing or like with the writing? With writing first. Uh writing takes me like sometimes like my most successful video I wrote overnight. Like that wow. Euro video? Yeah. It just like sometimes I was drunk and high and I was like, I think I'm just going to talk shit about the Euros and then I wrote it down. I write that's the other thing. It's like I write all the fucking time. I write every day. Um, I have stand up bits that I've written. I have like a whole entire folder called like white people stand up. Yeah. Like a whole Google doc of like just shit that like I could not say on this podcast and get canceled. Oh but, yeah. Like, 100%. Yeah. I was like some real, I like, Oh, I have that I'm in high, my material too. Yeah. When I'm high and like just go or drunk and I'm just like going for it. I'm like, Ooh, I read it back the next day. I was like, Oh no, <laughs> like, uh, I could yeah, not. Yeah. I would not say that in front of Mexicans like, you know, like that type of shit. But um, but sometimes you just kind of got to like, yeah, just kind of fucking so how go long, for it. How long? You know, takes a usually it takes a week and then it takes a, another week to edit. But I'm trying to like cut that down to like three days worth of writing and then like three days worth of editing and have like I'm but right now I'm trying hours, to, to scale in terms of hours because you say one week, but, you know, you're doing other things throughout these week. So I'm, I'm trying to have a better like work life yeah. balance. Like exercise is very important to me. Good shit, I boy. used to be a lot heavier. Really? So I have to go for yeah. I used to be like sixty pounds heavier before the pandemic. God damn, how tall are you? Uh, five ten on my hinge profile, but really I'm like five eight. But like Bro, you know, what? you know, you are the top one percent of Asians for Asians. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any girl who's like under like five four, I'm like, oh, you're tall. I'm like, yeah, I'm tall. Like, what's <laughs> I'm literally five four, so I have to go with that struggle of like. Oh damn! How tall is your girl? Uh, five four. <laughs> nice, bro. Nice. She claims that she's a little bit taller, but I don't know. I don't. You I gotta wear. Know. You gotta wear those. Uh, I wear platforms. Like, uh, shout out! Shout out to my short kings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta yeah. wear those. Uh, you can get like those little certain shoes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoes are like really important for like oh, shorter yeah. guys. You can get like those. Uh, I I call them the uh, what's his name? Tom Cruise lifts. So oh, Tom Cruise yeah, is notoriously yeah, yeah, yeah. short and he wears like lifts on all the shit. Korea, they have like those uh those shoes that like give you an extra inch or two. The boots, boots yeah. are like great. I have yeah. uh Converse's that are platforms. They add like two inches. So yeah. Solid. Listen to all my short games. No girl actually knows how tall six foot is. They just no. they like the concept of six foot yeah. tall. Just say you're six foot. But as long as yeah, as long as you're like taller than they are, and don't you know if you're five four, don't say that you're yeah, you yeah. know. Yo, no, go, I, I, three I claim 5'4 because I've already gotten to the point where I'm like, fuck it. If you don't like me for being short, then it is what it is. But I got a girlfriend yeah. now, so. Yeah, yeah um, you're doing all right. So uh, t- two weeks to edit, 
work-life balance. What What's your timing in terms of the editing? I know the writing side can be fluctuate. Um, like I... Would you say 24 hours? Total? Yeah. I don't keep track of time. Okay. I'm going to be honest. Okay. I wake up, I write until I hit the block, which is around usually like 1 to 2 p.m. I go for, and then like the rest of the day, I go for a walk right then. And then uh, I, I'm kind of free form after that. After That's so fun. So. Dude, I'm so jealous. I see the bad thing about, well, not it's not a bad thing because it is what's paying my bills and I get to buy a house this year, which is sick, is the fact that I get to watch my sister's businesses. But the downside of that is I do have not much time for the creative stuff. Like mm -hmm. podcasting, um, I always will make time for that. But when it comes to my main channel, like I want to make as much time as possible, but it's kind of hard sometimes, especially right now we're dealing with like a labor shortage with uh, nail techs. So I'm yeah. like figuring that shit out. But yeah, man, uh, thank you for the insight, by the way. I don't want to hold you too long. Plus, um, I think at like 2.30, I'm talking to this Vietnamese guy who, oh, dude, you got to search this dude up. His name is Mix Miyagi. Uh, we're going to plan a podcast Good, soon. Great name. Great name. Oh, I, yeah. So he looks black, like mm -hmm. black speaks fluent Vietnamese, like mm -hmm. more better than me. And I can speak pretty fluent, but this motherfucker has no accent and he he's raps in it. He's going to confuse the nail salons. Like, oh them. yeah. Oh yeah. He yeah. raps, he raps in Viet. So he's apparently mixed, you know, obviously Viet and black. And I'm just like, dude, so uh, I'm going to talk to him for a little bit, set up that podcast. And he's, he's got some clout himself, like 40,000 or something on YouTube. So yeah, yeah that's pretty cool. But th dude, thank you so much for the insight. I do want to talk to you a second after the podcast, but uh, we can wrap up the podcast. Any last things you want to say to people? Um, no, just like, thanks for having me on. You got to give me dude, like seriously. your tips for, uh, for, YouTube, for Instagram. Instagram Cause yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm too specialized into the YouTube sphere. But, yeah. Uh, I'll tell you right yeah. after this. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, what I'll say is one, thank you for being open-minded to a small YouTuber or a smaller uh, channel uh, that's that's huge and especially in our, our day and age where a lot of people like they get in their heads about how oh, much man. clout they got like i don't i don't get asked on a lot of podcasts to to be honest i don't get asked on a, a lot of stuff like in my head i'm still a small youtuber like you're pretty um, big to me dude you're a big boy uh, you're also that's uh, what like, that's what the five, girls say yeah i was gonna say you're also that's five inches say. taller than I'm me pretty big yeah and uh your jamaican ex-girlfriend said that you were relatively large and jamaica's average penis size got to be like eight inches so like Hey man. Yeah man. Yeah man. It was honestly, like honestly, better uh, than hitting 100k Soju on bottle. YouTube. Soju yeah. bottle. Yeah, just a just a little bit better than hitting 100k on YouTube was when that Jamaican girl was like, "Hey, you're pretty big, dude. 100. I can't fathom 100k. Like I can fathom 10k. I can fathom tw 20. 100 yeah. is like a lot to me. If you can hit a if you can hit 10k, you can hit hit 100k. If you get a hundred on YouTube, you get 100k on YouTube. That's the last thing I'll say to people. Yeah. Just like. You just need a you just need to keep on showing up and be consistent, you know. All That's right, it. guys, that is the legend himself. B minus B minus. Adios, amigos.